That's awesome. Yeah. There you go. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't need it. I had the mic muted until now. No, that's not a I like to announce so people know that they're out there being recorded. Yeah, I don't think anybody's joined right okay. now except me and you, but um, I know AJ said that um, he or she was looking for I a. He's he. He, I don't, I don't know. He was, he was, a, he was at a, a wasp. Okay, a wasp guy. Yeah, he's okay. not a wasp guy. Yeah. So. Um, I said we'll get the links out there and stuff. But. And I saw that you did. Yeah. Right here, man. I'm down. Boom. Well, uh, welcome to Asian Talk Work. Welcome to Practical Security. Um, this is I'm just here facilitating, helping out. This is uh, this is Josh's thing. So 2016, Josh Jenkins, everybody. Give <laughs> applause. We, we give applause like this. Just go ahead, feel free. Um, this is Josh's very first meetup, and so be easy on him. But uh, but anyway, we're here here to help him out. But this is actually not Josh's meetup. It's not my meetup. It's everybody's meetup. Uh, Brian's been to some of our meetups before, some meteor development meetups and stuff like that. Um, everybody, uh, this is, we all kind of, this is ours to run. Whoever steps up and leads gets to lead. And I hope that some of you guys will present in the future. Um, and we're going to try to do monthly mm -hmm. this, this night, like every month, whatever, every, every whatever month. this day is. It's like the third, third Thursday. Second, actually, it's the second Thursday in the month right now, so. Um, it's a pretty good day. I like Thursdays. Thursdays a great day. I got the hang of Thursdays. I'm like, uh, what's his face from a uh, hitchhiker's guy? He never got the hang of Thursdays. <laughs> of course, Tuesdays he never got the hang of. Fact. Fact. <laughs> That's a fact. And um, so anyway, um, we've got so folks that haven't been here before. Uh, restroom is in the back here. Uh, we've got some. We got we got coffee and and water and stuff. Holler if you need something. Feel free to sit, move around. We can move tables if needed. We've got standing desks. Feel free to use the whiteboard. I can actually change the lights if we need to. Can we please? Yeah. The, <laughs> it's gonna get a little brighter, but it will. It won't. It won't feel like we're in some kind of uh, like we need to get the EDM going or something. <laughs> 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 I mean, it looks really cool, but when you look at it, look, there's I'm like I'm like, they're gonna get dark for a second, so don't be alarmed. Oh, I like this better. <laughs> and there it is. Yeah, it's still flexy. Mm. This is it, at night. It's still a little flexy, so it's not. It's got enough uh, less blue, a little more yellows. A little more yellows. But uh, anyway, I think this will be fun. I've uh, I've long wanted to go to the OWAS Charlotte's, but it was hard to make it out with other meetup commitments. So I'm excited to have this here, especially so close to home. Absolutely. <laughs> Josh Jenkins. 2016? 2016. All right. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, Thank you everybody for coming out. Um, my name is Josh, uh, AKA the Huggable Hacker. Um, <laughs> want to take a moment just in, so just in case y'all haven't been introduced, because I've got most of your names, but I just want to refresh myself because I'm one of those kinesthetic visual people. <laughs> so if you could just, we'll just throw it around the room here and we'll start and introduce yourself. Uh, anything you want to tell me. <laughs> I'm Jeff Gilbert, uh, live in Albemarle. Well, it's one kind of close, but. This is my first meetup too, so. Awesome. You used to go to school near there. Uh, Pfeiffer University. Pfeiffer? Yes, sir. Pfeiffer. Yes, sir. Falcon right there? Another Falcon? Right there. <laughs> I know, that's cool. Brian Smith, Blender and Concord, independent developer. Welcome. John Aaron, uh, worked for Wells Fargo. In the uh, IT department, you got to come here for it. Uh, I'm Alejandro Caceres. Most people just call me Alex. Um, I uh, own a company called Hyperion Gray, the man in software R&D. Hi, Thunder. Yeah, I'm Alex. I'm currently using my name for five and a half weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Do we, do we have anybody? Yeah, um, I think we've got Mike Marcus on the line. Mike Marcus, uh, 2016, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. you got CQ, CQ, Mike Marcus? Yep. All right. Welcome to the party, Mike. we got five nines on the signal there. Good job. Thanks. Five by five. Um, and Mike is, uh, um, Mike, uh, we worked with Mike, and, and uh, he was here earlier, wanted, wanted to join in, but he he's, he's probably, uh, furthest out 
furthest out, out towards uh, Belmont. Outworth, probably even get ice and stuff tomorrow. Yeah. Where's he? Uh, Belmont, Mike, where you got? Yeah, I live in South Belmont. Yeah, so so between you and, and Jeff from Omar, maybe the furthest furthest hall, so for sure. And and I'm and I'm Mark and I go by Trot out there and um and I'm I'm just looking forward to this. I'm I'm loving it. Something something non development, which is nice for a change. <laughs> cool. Okay, so the topic tonight is Wi Fi or why I'm paranoid, part one. <laughs> So, um, again, I'm Josh. Um, I'm an info, info security analyst at Classic Graphics, and I also moonlight a little bit here at HV5 when the opportunity presents itself. So, um, dedicated to helping people better understand security and threats that face them every day. Follow me at hugglehacker.com or my handle, hugglehacker, on Twitter. So, cover a few things tonight. Um, we're gonna, the idea with this meetup, or this particular topic, is to show you a threat, or show you, you know, some types of threats, the red team inside of things, what the bad guy's gonna be doing, and then to show you a counterpunch to it, to try to defend yourself. Because you, know you can know how to attack someone, but it's better to know how to defend yourself. And then there's the ultimate game of cat and mouse. Up, up, up. So this is, the, this is the best information I have as of right now in terms of defense and attack. So we'll talk about, we'll go over the brief, brief, very brief, because you can get super, super deep on what, on what Wi-Fi is and what it is not. So we'll go very brief over that. Uh, get, we'll talk about types of threats and attacks, countermeasures. Uh, we'll also be talking about types of hardware. I, I like hardware. Um, you can do multi, any kind of attack with, like, East, like Trap was saying, with, you can do a lot of development and coding and make some very, very elegant attacks. But hardware does the same. Can you can do the same thing with hardware as well. So we'll go over a couple of things. I've brought in a couple of little toys that we'll, we'll, we'll go over here a little bit. So we'll go over a homebrew device, and then we'll also go over commercially available stuff you can buy off the shelf that's ready to go. So, um, and we'll live demo that as well, and that kind of goes into a, that, as, that as well. <clears throat> so let's start off with the very basic. What is Wi-Fi? <clears throat> and to give it to you in a one sentence thing, Wi-Fi is radio waves that carry data from point A to point Z. <laughs> um, that's basically what it is. Um, anyone here ever turned on a radio and gotten a radio signal? <laughs> that's the end, that is the end point, point Z, for person out at point A at your radio station. Um, I've been... Me and Shrop have kind of talked about this a little bit about you know doing a little ham radio because I really like the whole concept of radio and doing that, but there's a lot more to ham radio than I realize, so that's going to take a little bit more to more to play with. So, um, and I'll be glad to talk ham some some night too if that if that's of interest to anybody. But ham is a whole ham radio is a whole like big topic, just like security. You can kind of zone in on something you're interested in, and <laughs> there'll be aspects you're not interested in. It's it's a whole world. And I'm sure you guys are just looking for more hobbies. So if you're, if you're interested, um, we'll get you tested and, and licensed and all that stuff. So I heard a heard a joke one time. It said, "If you if you uh, have kids and you don't want them to get into drugs, get them involved in computers. <laughs> they will never have the money to do anything else." <laughs> um, so we're gonna um, some of the attacks we'll talk about tonight. Uh, we'll break them up into two different types. We're going to break them up into general and more focused attacks. And these are some of the top attacks that are out there nowadays. Um, we'll talk about you know, rogue APs, DOSing, um, session hijacking, lost stolen devices, and ending user snooping. Um, and we'll, um, again, we'll start very high level on what these are. And then, you know, I've got the whiteboards over here, which I'll draw out a little bit for you if you'd like, which I think I'm going to, <laughs> to really explain what some of these are. Uh, what some of these attacks are. So we'll start very, very broad here. Um, what uh, What is a DOS attack? We'll, we'll start with that one because that one's kind of an odd order. What is a DOS attack? Anybody? Denial, denial of service. Denial of service. So how do you denial of service on a Wi-Fi? <clears throat> 
Send them. Say what? Unplug it. <laughs> Easiest way, yes, is to kill power to it or block the signal. But if you're trying to, if you're using that as part of a bigger attack, say session hijacking or end to end, end user attack, you would want to start your attack by doing a DOS attack. Okay. So a DOS attack. You know what? I think I've got it up here. I'm gonna jump out of this real quick. I think I've got the picture right here. Yep. Cool. DOS attack works simply by flooding either your target machine or your target router with DOF packs. And that's simply a packet, 16, 18 bit, whatever that says, you need to DOF right now. It's accepted, it's accepted universally by either the router or the device. There's no way to protect against that unless, and we'll get into how to protect against that here in a second. So that's a DOS attack, and this one's going to be more based off of my Wi-Fi Pineapple Nano hardware, which we'll get into here a bit later in the, uh, in the presentation. And again, what it does is you can choose either AP DOS or a client DOS attack. So that's uh, that type of attack. So the client one would be going for the wireless network card? No, so a client one is your, that's where you take it from a broad general attack to more of a specific attack. You're looking for someone very specific. Say you're working for Wayne Enterprises and you're Lucius Fox and you're in the R&D department and I want to attack just you because I know you're out there. But just, he's behind his router and he's still got to go through the router. Right, right but I'm, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to, and we'll get into this here in a little bit, but basically what I'm good. <laughs> Basically, what you're trying to do is this is going to emulate this in a few minutes. You're going to you're going to de-off this, and when it tries to re-off, it's going to say, "Hey, I was just on X. This I'm still looking for X, but this is continually being de-offed, okay? Because these packets are still flooding this continuously, and now this is claimed as X. Does that make sense? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'm spoofing the router while I'm knocking it offline. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. sir. Sorry. Can I ask two quick questions? Please. Um, so first of all, what do you use to crack those DOF packets? Uh, does uh, Pineapple do that for you, or do you have? Is there some CLI program you use to do that? Or so, the Pineapple will do it for you. But if you do a if you do a home more of a homebrewed uh, setup, you would use something like Aircrack NG, Aerodump, something of that nature. Uh, but yes, the Pineapple will do that for you. But it is it does have the Aircrack suite on it that will. And it's, and it's all GUI based, so that just makes it just super, super awesome. Uh, second question was, yep. uh, do you want us to shut up and let you do the presentation and ask questions later, or should we just interrupt and ask questions? Um, interrupt. You can interrupt as I'm much as you want. It's one of those, that, that, that's what's going to make this just. I think it'll help, it'll help Josh um, move through and then know. And this is the first time you're doing this press, right? This is the first time I'm doing this presentation. So, so this will help give you ideas like to refine it and all that stuff. So yeah, just. Rapid fire. And the Rapid kind fire. of attacks that you're talking about can't come over the internet, right? You have to have proximity to the devices. Right. Now you can, if you if you start doing uh, over the internet kind of attack, we're into a whole different class of attacks right. at that point. And you're and you're looking at something. You're looking at a whole different animal at that point. Um, you're looking at something like low ion orbit cannon. Yeah, so this, is that, <laughs> this is what they're doing in the van outside. The <laughs> this is the FBI van. Yeah. Uh, By definition, my client is local. Exactly. This is more. This is way more localized. This is, you know, I am actively looking now. In this sense, for what I would do as a security researcher, I would be hired on as a consultant to say where your vulnerabilities are and stuff. So, sorry. Last question. Yep. Go. <laughs> uh, do you have to be authenticated to the router in order to send the DOF packets? Negative. What's that? Negative. You can just send DOF packets. You can send DOF. Exactly. It's one of those. The way Wi-Fi is, the way the way the Wi-Fi protocol is. It's by nature open. It's by nature trusting, and it's by nature going to accept things. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Yeah. So I mean, the whole the whole level of research that that goes into the just digging into it and showing showing how trusting this is is like bad USB. If you guys have ever heard that, oh man. It's, no. So in tapping onto this, what you're right here, um, and what Alex was talking about there, it, this is happening at a layer, a um, hardware layer above. Even like WPA passwording. I mean, that, 
this is nothing yeah, to do with you, you're not even you're not even at that layer yet, right? No, you're, you're at like a higher la level. So yeah, we're, we're still we're dealing we're dealing with the the, heat, the radiation in the, in the air at that point. So yeah. I mean, you're I think that would be like not even a layer at that point. That's like now, layers. I, I've heard is it, and I don't know if this is related to this aspect, but I've heard that like most Wi-Fi clients. Uh, did, and this is another part of Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Correct me here if I'm wrong on this, anybody, but that, that they actually will sit there and and this is how you auto connect to stuff. They'll sit there and say, "Here are all the APs. Here's a list of the APs I've connected to." It's called beaconing, and so, they'll beacon out what they know. Yeah, and that's a great way to discover and head into I think what you're maybe talking about is that oh, oh yeah, yeah. okay related? Yeah, that's that's. I like to hear about that. Yeah, there's a. And like I said, I'll, I'll tease you with this a little bit. There's a suite of tools on there, on, on the specifically the, the Nano and the Generation 6 and the 5 for that matter, um, that goes into a whole whole set of attacks where it'll beacon out. It'll say, hey, what are you looking for? And it'll, it'll respond back and say, I'm looking for X, Y, and it'll just, it'll just start spitting out what, it, what it's looking for. And then you can save all of that into a log and say, well, I'm this, 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 this. Come on, connect to me. <laughs> so if you think about it like this, you've got your home Wi-Fi saved to it, and it completely trusts that because if I don't know if you know this about Windows 7, it has three different ways you can connect. You can connect to home, which is the most, which is least restrictive, um, work, which is medium, and then there's public, which is the most restrictive. <clears throat> if you have one on there that's the least restrictive, it's going to go, let's do it. <laughs> It's going to connect up. It's like Ultron. The more you connect up, the better it gets, man. Oh, man. i got to go change something. <laughs> <laughs> A little Ultron reference here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, rogue access point. So I kind of have touched on that just, just a little bit. Um, you, to your question, to a, your question earlier about de authing and then reconnecting, and in an instance where you're trying to spoof, as you say, the device, what will happen is you have your router, which is broadcasting Wi-Fi 1, and it has a MAC address of that, the alt packets get sent to the router. This is more. This is the client side <coughs> attack instead of, or a, this would be a router side instead right. of a client side. But the principle is the same with client as opposed to router. So it floods the the off packets, and then it breaks the connection here and here. And Mike, uh, I'm showing the red arrows where the connection is getting broken. <laughs> Connections will get broke there, and then this starts sending out Wi-Fi 1, and the device is not smart enough without any intervention to know that the MAC address has changed. So it's just going to say, let's connect up and let's have a party. Let's just let's just start changing the packets. So for your diagram, uh, it, it looks like the pineapple router still actually routes your traffic to the web, so the, the user is not the wire. Right. This is this in a more focused attack. This is called a man in the middle attack, or pineapple in the middle, or pineapple in the middle. <laughs> okay. uh, it'll be. It's more. You're right. It's more man in the middle if you, you if you're using your computer as the as the middle bit because you'll have multiple radio bits here. So that's that's what that is right there. And uh, there you go. Yeah. The, the and a couple of devices. The uh, we'll, we'll speak more to the pineapple. So does the pineapple allow you to decrypt SSL? See. It, it, oh it has it has SSL strip on it, so okay. yes, you can you can, so you can strip right. And again, any any program that you can think of that's available, you know, on a Unix based system, this this device has it, or you can write your own. So, um, so yeah, we'll we'll get we we'll get into all these fun little bits about that because it's it, there's that would help people out if you could strip the SSL, right? That's, and, uh, that's helping them out. So, yeah, you, absolutely. Because because you're getting all the base books, you're sucking that stuff down. It's it's pretty. Providing awesome. the service. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just annoying. Yeah, yeah. come on. Who yeah. Needs, you throw yeah. a little SSL yeah. strip with a little header cap on it, and you're just. I mean, AT&T does it. Does. They put ads. In it. <laughs> so, I mean, why, why not? <laughs> so that's that's. Um, any questions about this or the last slide? Okay. So those are your those are your very broad <laughs> generalized attacks. Um, and I promised that I would share with you how to. How what, to if, what if there's multiple clients? Do they all get affected, or just? So if you're doing a router side attack, yeah. then yes, all clients would be affected. If but, you're specific, but, but they would all be unaware. They would all still get routed to the internet. Unless they were incredibly observant. Okay. <laughs> um, 
most of the time, most of the time, if you're doing an attack like that, where you're super focused on something, you're looking for something very specific. All right, you're trying to, you're doing a credential harvesting attack, where you're saying, hey, I'm looking for, I'm on your internal network, and what I'm doing is I'm looking for credentials to get into your intranet. So we'll use company. Well, again, we'll go back to the we'll go back to the the Batman, the Batman analogy. Uh, Lucius Fox. They have an internet that ha has access to their HR files, their AP files. Take take your pick on what kind of files. So what I'm doing is I've created a, a separate page where I'm again not even creating that. I'm just stripping out SSL because your admins were smart and they put SSL on it. And then I'm also using EtherCap to detect that. Is anyone everyone familiar with EtherCap? EtherCap is a Unix-based program that allows for credential harvesting. It'll detect when credentials are put in because it, it understands which uh, code in code where credentials are put in. And what it'll do, it'll say, okay, I'm looking for these credentials. Hey, credentials were put in on website xyz.com. In this case, it's Lucius Fox's intranet at Batman. And now here's my credentials for this site. So now what I'm doing, as I'm in your, as I've already gone into your, your network, I'm saying, I'm spoofed this, I've gotten to a terminal, and I'm logging in, I'm using his credentials, and no one's the wiser because Lucius Fox just logged into the HR files. So that, that, that kind of attack is possible there with what you asked. Hey Josh, explain to me how this is a denial of service attack. This one? This one's not. Okay, this, is this is Rogue AP. Okay. But if, you, if, you're not, if you're essentially not trying to route traffic back out, you're just trying to shut people down, yeah, this so is the first scenario. Right. Just, 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 a, just, a, just a denial of service attack. This takes it a step further by saying, I'm going to start routing it out and I'm specifically looking for something. And I'll, I'll, we'll get into the nitty gritty of that and it's, it's going to be fun. <laughs> so, um, the best way to uh, prevent a denial of service attack is there's really no way to prevent it. <laughs> um, DOS attacks are prevalent unless you have. Um, DOS protection, you know, you're saying you're limiting how many packets can come in from a, a particular user on the network level. We're talking like layer three at this point. You're talking physical layer. We're saying, we're going to say at the router, at the fire firewall, you can only flood me with this many packets at any given time. Is it going to slow you down? Oh, yes. <laughs> is, is business going to crawl to a halt? Depends. So without infecting something else, you can't really mitigate against it. Now you could paint your walls with lead paint and <laughs> prevent that. So there's that Faraday cage. Faraday cage, yeah. Yeah. but that this is uh, the DOS attack is one of the hardest to prevent. Um, rogue APs. Um, what you're going to be looking there to prevent against that is you're going to be looking for devices APs that allow for uh, rogue access point detection and blocking. Um, I used a product called, uh, I don't know if anyone's familiar with Cisco Meraki. Okay. It's got its advantages and it's got some serious weaknesses. One of its strongest advantages, in my opinion, and you can take that for what it is, was its rogue det AP detection and blocking. You would go in and say, we have this list of approved APs. We have this list of everything else is not approved. So if you, anything else pops up on our network, go ahead and just de off it. So it's not doing anything, and it's just going to send the off packets. Someone could connect to it, but it's going to get the off immediately. Case example of this: when I was working at AAA and we had the Meraki in play, we had a couple. Forgive it. We had a couple of developers that wanted their own Wi-Fi, <laughs> and so they they did. The developer, you can't trust them. I say that, and I don't mean, I don't mean it derogatory. No, no, they, just, they just they just they just. They're just going to keep working. They, 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 they tried they to circumvent the code to work. They circumvented. Oh, just, <laughs> they just circumvented everything I tried. It was horrible. I mean, every every protection we put in play, they circumvented. So what we wound up doing, um, what they wound up doing was they took a, uh, they took you know standard home wireless router, plugged it in. You know, we turned off the ports. They found another one. They eventually just took a splitter into the back of theirs. <laughs> Split it off and put the wire. So they so they were using they were piggybacking off the signal coming out of their port into their computer back out into this router so they get a wireless access. They wound up naming it DMV because we were right next to DMV at the time. Because right. they knew that one was whitelisted. If it's it, so so uh, when a Meraki blocks, is it looking? Can you have a list of whitelist? I mean, this may be going off. 
the train a little bit here, but can you whitelist the um, the B is it the BSID that's so it's BSS it's the BSID S BS SID and right. it's also the MAC address that it'll look for too. So that's what yeah. that, that'd be the approved list. Cause so even if someone had an SSID name that's the same, which is a common trick, right? Because at UNC Charlotte, people would students would bring up UNCC 49er. Same same okay. concept here, but what it's doing yeah. is it's it's inspecting the MAC address at that point because technology is getting to the point now where you can inspect MAC address BSSID and it's going to say, hey, because you can spoof the BSSID as well. Yes, but you cannot spoof the MAC. As much as you'd like to try, you cannot spoof that. And if you are trying to spoof that, then you're trying to do something completely different. Are you different. positive you can't spoof the MAC? Because I thought I've been, I thought I've done that before. So you can, so for But me, maybe I'm hard, not on wireless, but on wired. So, you can, so in wireless, you can spoof it if you're doing the attack. Okay, does that make sense? So in a homebrew attack with this, if I've got multiple radios here, I'm gonna spoof my, mon, my monitor zero, which is what I'm gonna be doing to search for it. So if anyone goes back and is looking through logs, they're gonna see that my, uh, I'll show you this. This comes back to what I was talking right here. I can spoof, say my MAC address is this right here, and I wanna spoof it to something completely odd that they're never gonna look at, I'll just zero it out. So they're gonna see that. They're gonna know something, something's hinky, but they're not gonna have the actual MAC address. Does that make sense? So attacking- Oh, it's like zeroing out your IP. Correct, okay. Attacking can change, defense not so much in this instance, unless, no, we'll just for the sake of this conversation, it's it's not yeah. it's not feasible. So, um, covered that, covered that. Um, now we'll get into any questions so far. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, we'll get into a few more focused attacks here. I think yeah. no more pictures for there. Uh, focused attacks, session hijacking. Anyone familiar with session hijacking? Uh, a session hijack is where you, you, you're using an unsecured, or you have an unsecured Wi-Fi, okay? And, or it's using something really, really weak encryption, like WEP. We're talking really bad encryption, like why is this even set up kind of encryption? Um, and it will take advantage of that bad encryption and just jump in on it. Just set right on top of it and say, it's mine now. Uh, best way to mitigate against that um, is to, best way to mitigate, and let me back up a little bit. Um, these are, a lot of these are going to have enterprise applications here. Um, so you're, in this instance, you're probably setting up a, uh, an enterprise, um, oh Lord, what's the word I'm looking for here? Radius server. You're probably setting up a radius server here and you're using local authentication because with session hijacking, lost stolen devices, it depends on you using a pre-shared key. Okay, mm -hmm. and if you're using a pre-shared key, that's that can be potentially bad because if you have that key, then you're in the network. But if you're using something like a radius server, um, then when the person leaves, you just deactivate their account. They're no longer allowed to get in. Their device, they're going to be on their device, and they're going to try to log in. It's like, oh wait, you, your credentials are bad. They've been shut down, so you're out. So that's what these de depend on with that lost and stolen device. You're walking around. I'm at Starbucks. Leave my phone there. Someone gets it. They got my PSK. They got my pre-shared key on that one. They're getting in. They're causing all kinds of hell. Um, so again, that goes back to shutting their account down. Radius server. Um, user to user to user snooping. This is where someone really smart. Okay, I know most most everyone in here has dealt with end users at some point. I know Shrop has. I know you have. I've dealt with end users. You get those, you get what we call super users, <laughs> okay? And a super user is someone. They're the favorites. They're, they're, they're your favorites. They're your favorites. <laughs> they're the ones who, know, they're like, hey, I took a couple computer classes. I know about Wireshark. I got it on my computer here. <laughs> and they're Wiresharking on your network and looking at traffic. <laughs> and they're using, again, this doesn't, this, this, this one right here is probably the scariest, the, user to user snooping because the user's already authenticated, okay? And they're using the pre-shared key, and they got Wireshark on their computer, and they're just snooping, snooping on people's traffic, and you know, they're decrypting traffic. They're like, oh, this is kind of cool. Oh, that's nice. Hey, I see how your, I see what your preferences are. So, then you have a problem. The best way, again, to mitigate that is to rate a search. Make sense on that? 
And I would, I would, those are, those and I would be careful doing that because you're more than likely breaking policy at a company, which, which I know a policy is a policy and all that, but, but that if someone was looking to get rid of somebody, that's, that's an easy win. <laughs> like if you're, so if they find out you're doing it, then they can go bye bye. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully you work at a company that has a strong um, information communication policy, stuff of that nature. Hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> So, or you can work at a university and or they have the policy yeah. and they, there's no way they could ever find you. You're in one haystack. Yeah. And that's beautiful, by the way. That's not beautiful. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> that's horrible. <laughs> so, um, some mitigation on that. So, let's jump over to hardware and software. Some of my, so we'll jump over to some types of hardware. Um, we've, uh, we've kind of talked about it. A little bit already, but there's several different types of hardware you can do. Your uh, again, commercially off the shelf available. Buy it for 150 bucks, it's ready to go. Or you can do something a little more down to earth that you can control and you know exactly what's on. So multiple devices out there. Re or Raspberry Pi, listen. <laughs> Wi-Fi Pineapple. By the way, dude, this, there's this great one about doing a, a pen test Dropbox with a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> Um, it's Home Pi th version three, uh, commercially available. You, uh, not commercially, it's a community version. Download it, put it in, pen test Dropbox. You drop it on someone's network, have it auto SSH back to your command and control. Boom, you're in. Bob drum. We can talk about that one later. <laughs> um, again, there's the Nano, which we'll be going over a little bit later. Uh, the Tetra. Um, these are all produced by a company called Hack Five out of California. Uh, great company. Uh, oh, so so the so the guys that do the podcasts, they're, they they're the same. They well, they so is it yeah, the same? Yeah. Is it the same folks? Same folks. They do they do they have a whole they have a whole litany of a uh, or a whole cadre of tools that they use or that they produce. Um, I didn't realize they were connected. They are. That's cool. Yeah, they're uh, they, and there's a few other there's a few others. I'm actually doing a series a, a video series right now on quote everyday carry. I don't know if you guys are familiar with everyday carry. I'm doing an everyday carry on all my hacking devices and all the all the devices that I carry for everyday and use on for security analysis or pen test. Uh, Tetra and the Nano are their two newest products. I'm not I'm not being paid by them by the way. I'm not <laughs> no compensation whatsoever from Hack Five for stumping them for their for their products. They're just they're quality products and they they're really really helpful for security research. Or you can do something a little more homebrewed, like, like I do. Um, you know, get a couple of Wi-Fi dongles, plug them in, have multiple radios going, Aircrack NG, uh, Wireshark, just have a great old time. Um, we'll get into this little bad boy. This one's called Serif, Social Engineering and Phishing. This is instead of a more broad attack like your DOSing, this is a more targeted spear phishing attack based on a couple of different projects that were never intended to be used like that. They just get mashed together and baked together. You've got Sarah. Or any well-configured device, mobile device, can be used for everything we're talking about. I think I think you guys maybe have bought a Pwn, Pwn pad. Did you buy a Pwn phone? No, we didn't know Which, buying that, but I know what you're talking about. So any, any, any Android, rooted Android device can be used in this exact same manner, especially if you have uh, a separate, a separate uh, radio, Wi-Fi dongle radio or Bluetooth radio, you can use it in the same manner. So, any questions about that? Mike, you still good there? I'm good. Cool. Sweet. Sorry, I'm eating my dinner too. Mmm, <laughs> smells good. It smells great. Um, you can smell my breath from there. Oh, Marcus. Yes, I can, sir. Yes, I can. Um, software. Um, obviously Kali Linux is a great place to start. Uh, I know a few of you have expressed some sort of interest in getting, breaking into the field, at least. Um, great way to do that is to learn Kali Linux. Um, I'm actually going out for my OSCP right now, which is, um, the Kali version. It's called a defensive security certified professional. Um, it's learn how to use, learn how to hack using Kali. Really cool stuff. I mean, they don't just deal with, you know, hacking with the, Cali, they deal with debugging. You can actually learn to debug apps, and that's really cool because you know you hear about all these cool 
hacks where people are like, man, I found a vulnerability in this program right here that does like the most obscure thing in the world, but at the end of the day, it winds up dumping out 100 million credit card numbers. By debugging a program, you can figure that out, and that's... Okay, so that's that's what folks probably use, or at least something like like that, uh, like they, they're looking, a lot of times they're looking in the app stores like Google Play or mm -hmm. the Apple App Store for uh, apps that are calling out on the network for things, phoning home, doing all the stuff that you're like, I don't really want that going on. So you download a calculator. <laughs> that, yeah, you download a calculator program and deep in that code buried somewhere is reverse DNS, reverse DNS called that, or a reverse auto SSH, or Metasploit shell, those are, those are fun. Metas, reverse Metasploit shells, mm -hmm. They were called back out to your CNC server, which can be as big as server farm or small as a Raspberry Pi, which I've done both. <laughs> you can, DigitalOcean provides great hosting services. You can use them as command and control. Uh, it's probably against their uh, terms and use. So. <laughs> that would be careful there. Yeah. <laughs> but using a Raspberry Pi, using a $35 computer with something like uh, no IP, if you guys are familiar with no IP, you can use that, make a hole, make a hole in your firewall, and that can be your command and control server. And but you got to be really good at setting that up because if you're not careful, you could be hacked yourself doing that. So there's there's issues, there's dangers with that too. So uh, again, like I've mentioned a couple of times, Aircrack NG it's this whole suite of tools that allows for um, testing, uh, again, deauthing. Checking on or getting BSSI gathering information and um, attack. Um, Droichi. I, I threw this one in here because I don't know if anyone remembers Droichi. Uh, Droichi was a tool that was used to detect if you were getting, if you were, your Wi Fi was being, you know, you were not in the right Wi Fi area. Say you're on. HP5 Wi-Fi, and all of a sudden you're on and HP Wi-Fi again, HP5 Wi-Fi again, but it's not actually HP HP5 Wi-Fi, it's my pineapple. It's gonna let you know immediately. Problem with it was it was it was based off some bad code. So it got and it, you had to root your device and it wasn't convert it wasn't available in the store because they didn't like it and this is pre-Snowden and once Snowden came out this this nice being the Russian bro. Yeah, the Russian. <laughs> The Ru a good Russian wrote it. <laughs> but there are good Russians, yes. Yeah. A good guy wrote A good guy, see I say that, I'm, I say that, I'm like, oh man, I just said something. But anyway, <laughs> a good guy wrote it, but the people who were in charge, that knew stuff, that knew the bad stuff was going on, this free Snowden effect, shutting down. So you can still do it with a rooted device, but yeah. Just out of curiosity, do you know how it worked? I mean, was it like checking back addresses, or was it? It, it was, it was, yeah, again, it's exactly what it was doing. So that, that's the, that's the droid version of something that Smarter Wi-Fi, which we'll go over here in a little bit. Smarter Wi-Fi is another program that allows to inspect and otherwise detect false APs with you being spooked. Um, of course, there's Wireshark. Any, any good, any good researcher is going to have that in his toolkit. I mean, it's worth the time to go find instructional videos online, YouTube, spend a couple hours, learn how to use it. Very beneficial. Even if you're not in the security field, if you're just a network administrator, that I, that has saved my butt. Well, so I can many give times. you a great example uh, of of using tools like the, I use TCP dump uh, sometimes. But like, um, let's say that you've got, and this is more this is a developer kind of thing. But you're you're authenticating against Active Directory in an application or an LDAP server, and you think you've got everything set up correctly to have encryption for the authentication. But do you really know that that's really happening? So, um, so that, that those those tools are great for that. So you can you can at least you can at least pretty quickly see that the the data is mangled up and not at least plain text is at least not the password you put in um, at, at the most basic level. And I'm sure people that know more about it could go deeper than that. But um, but I found that really helpful. And and back at older jobs, I would have network engineers actually do that for me. Like if I had something set up and I I'm kind of like Think, I think we're set up right, I think the certs are right, I think things look good, I'd set up a test environment and then I would let them man in the middle um, my setup and then say, can you, you know, guys a network engineer to do that and say, can you kind of poke around and see, like you see, you know, stuff flying around that's open, so 
I think that's I think that's super handy. And I guess that is sort of security related, but it is something that comes up anytime you configure a system. Mm -hmm. It's so easy. Just it, it says, oh, just put in your you know your LDAP setup. You know, put in your your directory information, and but you just assume that it's probably fine. But how do you really know that? How do you confirm that? Unless so, you pop the, and you remember recently when we were sitting here, we we're working with uh, was it own cloud? It was it was the, the you remember when your, your encrypted fi or your files that you were going between where you completely took your documents out of the cloud and they were just syncing between was it sync? Or what am I talking about? Oh, was it BitTorrent sync? BitTorrent sync. So, BitTorrent sync. Great example here. Yeah. Uh, well, I highly recommend. Yes, highly recommend BitTorrent sync. BitTorrent sync. Uh, especially, especially since you can take yeah. all of your files out of the cloud and have them on your devices at that point. Uh, what we did with what we did with or me and Trop did was yeah. Shrop, you were checking me out. I wanted to. Yeah. We wanted to see how. Yeah, I was checking you out, Shrop. You know on. it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so what we wound up doing was, uh, Shrop took it, took his devices, took all his files off, out of the cloud, and we wanted to see how the encryption looked between device A and device B. So what I did was, we took, we wire sharked it up. I took device A, said this is. This is starting point, and then device B is my endpoint. I want to see the traffic that goes in between wirelessly because there's no there's no cable here. It's just between who is MacBook. And it's and a peer to peer peer to peer yeah situation. So and then linked it up, watched the watch the traffic go across. Looked like total gibberish, which is what you want to see. You don't want to yeah. see clear text. If you see clear text, you've done something wrong. So that's why I say BitTorrent Sync, great product to have. Now you have to check in with their documented setup of what that gibberish is and, and hope that it's right. I mean, I, Cause we don't know. You, you it wasn't plain text. It that doesn't mean that it was fan. That also doesn't mean it's great encryption. It just means, it just means that some, yeah. someone at a very low, at a very low level of script. And I hate to use this term, but script, your script kiddies, your people who are, you know, just your 12 year old kids sitting in the basement, screwing around with stuff. They're not going to be able Unless they're really motivated, and that one's not script kiddies. <laughs> Unless they're super motivated, they're not going to get in there because that type of encryption is very good for keeping honest people honest. And, and that, and the essence, that is. Well, what and they're also going to move people that are just looking. They're not targeting a specific person or machine. They might just move on to the next candidate that's easy and open already. And that's just how that works. Correct. Unless they're going after you, and if they're going after you, they're going to they're going to get you. Anyone who's super so motivated, you better just unplug from the network. Yeah. Anyone who, if they're good, and again, it's pretty, done. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's just let's just go. We're this, done. this meetup's done. Yeah, we're done. We're, we're, we're screwed. We're out. We're, it, it, it's just yeah. It, every time I get down that road, I start getting super depressed because it's, just, it's all over. So it's this over. is Brian, by the way. Hey guys. Yeah. And then again, I was talking about a little earlier debugger. This is one of my one of my favorites. It's called GNU. G G N U. It's the Linux flavor of it. It's Linux debugger. It's it's nice. Sounds nice fish too. I like fish. Um, so we're going to get to the part of the demo now, uh, doing homebrew versus commercial. And I think this is a nice place to stop just for a second, take a breather, stand up, stretch, and because uh, I've got to go hey, real quick, so, <laughs> um, get up, stretch, and I would be, I would be back. We'll, we'll Everybody, take a break. We'll get, get you a drink or something. In, reconvene here in about ten minutes. Sounds good. Mike, you good there, man? Yeah, I'm good. Cool. Be right back, man. Thanks, Josh. Yeah. What's it? Well, I'm still working on the foundation parts of CloudStrike. I'm also working on uh, stuff that's not open source. Uh, kind of cool. Like, I just got done implementing the things. Look at this stuff. Which is cool. I'm taking notes on it. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of terms. <laughs> yeah, let's see. I'm yeah. glad. Yeah. And I'm not. Yeah, yeah. See, you're going to think about this. Well, I'll hold it in two weeks. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm very. Yeah. 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 I have had some previews or some stuff that you want to find out and go like pretty crazy. But I'm only challenging you to like just be careful for a couple of hours. I know. If I want to play with this stuff, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Yeah, the way to play with it is to set up a blast. And that's something we can probably do with this person. It's 
take a knife and set up a network just to play. Yeah. We're rolling ahead to devices, maybe they're formatted and stuff, but nothing's going to be laid out. And we can put the great devices into it and start sniffing traffic. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's all doable. I apologize to everybody. Um, but while, while Josh is out, I'm going to command beer for a moment. So, we have a tradition with our meetups that if you, if you benefit, you have to contribute. That's the way it works. Okay? So, what that means is you came, you get to present. All right? It's really not as horrible as it sounds. Not tonight. It's not tonight. It's like jumping in. It's like jumping in a cold pool. Um, want to discover that it's actually kind yeah. of warm. Okay. <laughs> um, so here's how it works. Well, you, you think it's you like it's got ice floating in it. Yeah. You think it's got ice floating in it, but when you jump in, you're like, oh, this is not too bad. So the way this works is. Brian, you've been this. You've been. You've seen this, haven't you? Have you been in a meeting with us? Okay. All right, get ready. So, um, there are a number of things we've learned over the last four or five years running meetups. One is that a group lives or dies by participation, and another one is that uh, it also dies if you only have two or three people ever doing presentations. Okay. And the last one, well, there's actually tons of things, but another key one is that um, when you book sessions with topics three to six months out, people can go, oh, I don't care about that. Oh, I'm so showing up for that. Okay. And if you don't, if you just have this generic topic, then people go, well, I don't know what I'm going to hear tonight. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to get some pizza and watch Netflix. Okay. So, booking three to six months out helps a, a group thrive and actually be able to just click on great presentation and so on. So this is a hack. By the way, we shared this with uh, other um, meetup leaders and have seen them benefit hugely from this, including the media meetup group, which is basically all the media captains for all the meetup groups all over the world started leveraging this technique. So original to our meetups, by the way. What we do is we basically, what are you interested in? So this is an InfoSec meetup. What are you interested in learning about within InfoSec? Okay. That's your topic. All you have to do is learn everything you can before your, we schedule your presentation and show up and share what you've learned. Okay. And, I'll, and I'll be good cop. You don't. He's bad cop sometimes. So I'll be good cop. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you, don't have, you don't have to be an expert. No. Nope. You don't have to come with everything you don't have figured to have out. A nice slide deck. You don't, I mean, look, the, the Huckable Hacker's got the nice slide deck. You don't Which, have to have any of that. You can just get he up and I collaborated on that. Tweaked it, tweaked it, tweaked it. Okay. He had a lot of help. He, and, and, Jason Robinson and did all the design for this day. Um, uh, about it, but but he's getting the HD5 support ecosystem. Okay, so don't compare yourself to that. All you have to do is show up and go. Here's my laptop. I hook up to the screen and I show you. You know, this website as as I read. I figured this out. I tried yep. this. I got stuck here. Okay. The awesome thing we've seen is some of our most engaged meetups have been the ones where somebody got stuck. And people are in the room, interested in the topic. They're not having to present. They just go, well, actually, I've run into that problem. Here's how I got around it. And then sometimes right there live, they get around it, and we're on to the next thing, and, and an hour or two will go by where people are just fully engaged. Some of the, and literally walk out, but that's the best thing about it. Okay? So it's not at all about coming in and showing off how much you know. It is instead coming in and sharing what you've learned. But if you know a lot, I'm going to show it off. We're that's awesome, that. too. So. No. Yeah. You will not turn that but, away. No, no, absolutely not. Yeah. But if you're if you're if you've never done a presentation, it can be absolutely intimidating. We've had people like walk up and you can tell they're all shaking. But it's it's a friendly environment. It really is. People are in there to learn, people that know more, a lot of times they're relaxed because they didn't have to present it tonight. Um, and they can just share what they know. So anyway, all I say is um, these are I don't know, I'm not no, I lost the screen for a second. You're good. So, uh, when I have your name, um, actually your name and, and the topic. And if you if you feel comfortable with this, you should probably throw out a topic early because that'll be next month. 
If you're really uncomfortable, take some time to think about what you want to learn about, end up lower on the list as you get more time. Um, usually what we do also, as the meetup really gets ramped up, is we'll have a one-on-one -on -one session, which is basically like, uh, what is InfoSec and why do I care for the first half hour? So that's kind of the basic. Somebody who's not even really familiar with this whole arena can come in and kind of cover the same things every time if somebody comes to the one-on-one -on -one session. And then we have more advanced topics like what you guys would be. And I would say speak up for what you're looking for too, because that yes. helps. Like every meetup that I, I attend, and Brian, you say the same thing, but uh, we have people that are complete beginners. Yep. We have people that are super advanced. You got people all in the middle and the gooey middle, and and so what 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 happens is we try to make sure every meetup we have opportunity for something that somebody everybody should walk away learning something or meeting somebody or engaging somehow. That, making that's some progress on their yeah. own path. Yeah. So. All right. So who who's uh, eager to present? Present stuff. Uh, I'll do uh, Punk Spider. Punk Spider. Um, I mean, that's like uh, maybe like a colon in there. Is it? Is it? Oh, sorry. Yeah, tongue spider. It's 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 one word. It is um, one word. Okay. And then the is word, it SPY or SPY? It's camel case. It's, it's not camel case. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you have to write so far, except uh, the, it does matter. It, it does matter. matter. <laughs> uh, spider is all camel. Oh, uh, okay. It's a, it's a very loud spider. It's a very loud spider. It's a very loud spider. Can we put a colon in there? Or right there? <laughs> Where do you want the colon? I was going to say after, like after that. So it's going to be about, I mean, if I just say I'm oh, you mean yeah, yeah, no, no, I was going to ask next, like what's the tag? What's uh, so it'll be like um, mass scale uh, vulnerability. Finding vulnerability, right. finding at scale. Yeah, sure. Yeah. How about finding both vulnerabilities across the entire internet? All right. Something like that. I'm just going to shortcut this across the entire net. What's that? You mean like both Yeah, send it on the website. Alex, right? Is it? Yeah, it's it's mass, yeah, scanning, right. mass scanning vulnerable websites. Mass scanning for vulnerable hey, right. I actually like that better than what we have. We'll try connecting again. Give me, you want me to raise it? You know what? I may let us again. I'm sorry. I'm not making <laughs> this is my contribution to the meetup, man. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. No. I, don't, I don't mind at all. Am I still broadcasting this one? Yeah, you're sorry, good. So, 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 you see so the mouse moving all that? Hmm? Yeah, if you want, we're starting a uh, um, digital marketing meetup. If you want to come and present on something digital marketing related, feel free. Okay. This one is an InfoSec meetup. Uh, okay, uh, do you want like, just as many topics as you think of? Or just, no, 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 just sign up for one. Keep the others in the bank, yeah. man. Okay. Because your train comes back around. Yeah. <laughs> See, the more the group grows, the less you have to present. It's wonderful. It's like 30 people. You only present mm -hmm. once every nearly three years. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who else? Surely you want to learn something or you wouldn't be here. It's a trap. See, we bait the trap of the presentation. And it could, go, be, it could be what is InfoSec. That could be your topic. Awesome. So oh, you well, man. So you've learned what he's got to present, but there is so much more. Yeah. By the way, here's the other thing I want to tell you. This is, a, this is another little uh, hack. Right? You write it down. You're totally intimidated. Okay. You come back to cover and you say, "I have this presentation coming out, and I am freaked out." Okay. Then Josh and I will sit down with you and kind of guide you towards a whole lot of knowledge. You'll feel like, you know, actually, I can talk about this, all right? And we're fine doing that. But you presenting is part of the vibrancy of the group, okay? So it is a contract. Here's how the contract works. If you don't present, the next time you come back, you're presenting. Where it does doubling up, okay? <laughs> if, you, if you don't ever want to present, don't come back. Because <laughs> you're presenting, baby. <laughs> Right. 
Get uh, this this meetup like, page. So okay. we're launching a bunch of meetups. We're we're taking digital marketing from the next. I've got uh, so the model is you have a in the Josh is the lead for this. HP five supports Josh. Um, Vincent is the guy who's going to be leading the digital marketing uh, meetup. Similar, we'll be supporting him. Um, we've got five or six others that are primary candidates. So one we're looking at is the tiny houses meetup. Um, so on and so forth. Okay. So yeah. So if you've got a topic and you want, if you want to lead the charge on a given meetup and it fits into kind of our culture, then we're going to have the meetup inside of the tiny house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're going to build the tiny house inside here. And then, and then we're everyone gonna... crawls inside and has the meetup there. Um, one of the things that Alex cares about, so I guess you can present everything you know about it. Um, and this, is, I think this is info speculated from the. Uh, perspective of um, social engineering. Okay. Um, like how how social engineerable am I? Like how much information Ooh, that's a great topic. about me? How many wow. of my passwords can you just Google the hash? Like how do I? You know, like how how bad am I? How much shit have I put out? All right. There? How serious are you about finding out? Like, am I willing to let Like, Josh are you willing to let Josh social yeah. engineer you? Because that would be awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, um, all the Josh, do you provide last name? Do you provide last name as well? Are we just going through the first one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. So, it could be, it could be somewhat staged. Too. I mean, you got to script some yeah. examples if you don't want to do it. Well, I think my passwords are clear. It's a right? So, I'm going to Okay. Yeah. For sure. All right. And like in general, I'm just kind of curious, like how how bad is my digital footprint? So, so what's your password? How far can we go? <laughs> how far can we go with well, this? Just, just, just text me the root password. password. Can, can we can we with your permission like um, reset your password with your cell phone provider? Can we get into your Gmail account? Like how far can we go? Okay. Well, yeah. The answers are, are always no. <laughs> this is a trap. Yeah. <laughs> so you definitely have to set up some rules of engagement there. Sounds like you would be awesome. I think it would be awesome just to set up with uh, scripted stuff. Yeah. 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 Yeah
you spell the last name wrong? Mm -hmm. So is it a PHP app? No, it's a C sharp ASP .net. Okay, that's a little bit. All right. <laughs> well, it won't be your I know, app. I know where the where the. It won't, it won't be your app that has the vulnerabilities. Right? Here now, here <laughs> now. <laughs> but I know now. where those are. Three Unless you find one that is already. Okay, yeah, so yeah, those of yeah, you that haven't right. thrown out anything you're interested in yet, just think you have an entire four months minimum to get ready. You should you should be yeah. reading a little easier. Now. So the heavyweights have already gone first. Uh, can I make just one quick suggestion? Absolutely. Uh, this is your meetup too. Yeah, uh, I think it would be really cool if there was more than one person on each topic. Um, okay. Just because the process of like the discovery might, you might learn a lot from that. Like for example, yeah, I think I think these yes. are going to end up being Someone's more than one. Yeah. 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 This yeah. one, I don't know that anybody can contribute. Yeah. I know that's I'm not a problem. You're, with that. you're kind of like me. Like, that one. Oh, no. no. <laughs> no. 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 Alright, so you do it. I'm gonna try to see this. It's not like a database of vulnerabilities and it's like a shit or standing uh in yeah, 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 yeah. You can't get them to start to do this presentation. Yeah, yeah. Come back next time. Not fair, not fair. It's a distributed. Party five, party five, party five! What's my idea? What's my idea? What is it? I don't know about ethical action. Awesome. I don't like it. I don't know. It can be topical. Yeah. Yeah. All right, in your name again? Brian. For the IRY. Last name? Smith. All right. We got, we got two more lands for the slaughter. Come on, young boys. You'll see it up, you'll see it up on me, though. <laughs> Uh, I think somebody should do one on uh, basic network attacks. Like, you, you want to do another one? Like, I'm, right. I'm just saying somebody. Uh -huh. Sounds like you. I can do it. Yeah, yeah, I'll be yeah. Like basic it. network attacks, like using my display. And we'll collab. We'll yeah. Collaborate. Yeah, perfect. So you're you're doing your OSCP right now, right? Yes. I'm as well. So awesome. I'll also have to talk about that. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna put this on Alex slash JJ. Um. I, I am taking on Windows Forensic, of course. So you're presenting yeah. on Windows Forensic? Okay, if you give me like six months, I can do it. That's about what you got so okay. far. I'll just share. The only problem is that if you find some vulnerability in, in Mojo Portal, and you know, if it's published on the internet, I'm going to have a lot of people. Oh, no, no, we won't publish. No, no, we won't publish any results. <laughs> no, we won't post. Now, Part of why you need to collaborate is even the presentation may need to be somewhat redacted. Right. Um, but that's that's why the, the parameter. Of course, it comes up clean. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 So if it comes up clean, if it comes up clean, then I have a, a, another friend. Well, I'll oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I'll, I'll say, JJ and I can't get in on Sick of Mojo. Like, yeah, sure. Because of the content of this, of this, this is a little different by the meetup, mm -hmm. because the content, it, just be aware since we are recording and we're watching. Right. There's ever a time where we need to go dark on that. Yeah, so we need to holler. Because yeah. remember, people that show up here get first priority. Yes. And we will we will shut down the screen. We'll shut down the recording. I'll be yes. I'll, I'll be honest on that. You just gotta holler and, and let me know. We, by the way, we screen and record all of these by default, so we put them up on YouTube. People that couldn't make it can yeah. see it. People that you know. Couldn't show up that night and just watch it going. But there, but the, the, I can already. I mean, I I need to in tonight. There's going to be presentations that have content that yeah. just can't get out there. I've already said some things. Yeah, I, I regret. I regret some things. <laughs> I'm just saying that. Already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, AT&T. <laughs> uh, can I make another suggestion? No, no, all right. I know I'm like no. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just like came from right. here and start like. You, you, you can only make another suggestion if you stop asking for permission. Okay. <laughs> um, what are we, well, I forgot what I was going to say now. Oh, holy yeah. So, um, oh, cool. so there's a lot. Uh, what do you think about potentially more than one uh, presentation per night? Like, I, like we, you don't want to do like, done like five. So here's, and then you get yeah, we've done two to three. Um, and, and the challenge we run into is three is always too much. 
two only works if you can guarantee that one is both lightweight and not that interesting. Because as soon as you get one, you go, okay, well, this one's not going to be that long, and this is the really heavyweight. And then the heavyweight guy shows up or girl or whatever, and the, the first one ends up being really intriguing. It was supposedly light. And everybody just hangs on to that one and won't let it go. Okay. And, and then you end up with one presentation well, anyway. The time, the time so, that it works the best is when the two pair up and, and yeah, the topic. If they're, like if, if they're, they're similar just, topics. Yeah, they're kind of real weed. And, and, and I think, Alex, Alex, did you mention having two people on a press? Um, yeah. Like, I think that's a good way to I do it. I think that will help a lot. Yeah, yeah. pairing up with people, feel free to do that. No, you know, so, so Jeff and John or, or anybody that's, that's presenting, like, if it helps, if it helps to have, because we've got the internet, it's not like people have to meet together or something like that. Uh, you can split up and say, I'm going to take this half of the presentation and talk about this subject of, of it, and then you're going to take the other half or whatever. It, you know, if that helps take a little of the pressure off, that's totally cool. You should probably do that one too. Yeah, I'd be glad to do that. You, you participate? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's, there could also be like uh, the basics of uh, like web app hacking, like how do you, how do you get some you, you, you want to put another one there? Yeah. 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 We got a couple of people that yeah. got to go before you get three <laughs> in the queue, man. Yeah. But they're enjoying how this keeps oh, going yeah. on. They're like, wow. wow. I've come for a long time. Bro. When does the snow start? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm more time for It is. When, you, when you've done your fifth presentation, you're like, I could come on another one. Oh, yeah. It starts to get a little burnout. Yeah. I've got one. I'll do one on ham radio. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. Jeff, are you a, are you a ham? Nice. KF4 is easy. Yeah, 73s. KK4. Yeah, I Nice, nice. So what, what is yours? KF4 is ZZ Fox. Yeah. 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 That's that's awesome. I'm, I'm, take that, take that, run. I'd love to see some hands. He's up. like, I'm the last man standing. <laughs> but I it, should not. This, I hope these days, these days, it's, it's usually me and a bunch of seventy year olds in a ham thing. <laughs> so that, that's the thing. It's nice to find <laughs> I was, somebody else. I don't know how old you are, but someone else. <laughs> All right. Well, well, no, no, no pressure I'm, on John here because let's pair up. I'll, I'll I'm, I'll be be glad to help. Yeah, be glad to help. No problem. The best fun is when you invite other people. Okay. Because I don't know. They don't know that this is what happens the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and you can smile. And you can just smile. <laughs> hey, put, put. And your next presentation is delayed that much more. Hey, Brian, put me, <laughs> Brian, put me down with Jeff. I, Jeff asked me out. I'll take my book out with him right here. Okay. So whatever. Awesome. Yep. Sweet. Man, we're already like. So this is actually a good thing though. Yeah. This, this is how, this is how we up just catches wings and pulls I'm gonna tell you, and, and, and people will show up because yeah. they'll they'll go oh, like, holy crap, they already got on that. Yeah, and, and they'll see topics that they're interested in. Yes. So how long has this been going on? This first night is first night. Yeah, you're in. You're a founding member. You are a founding presenter. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to issue t-shirts, HB5, InfoSec. We will not have bylaws, we will not have a constitution, we will not do right. that. <laughs> you just have to contribute, yeah. right? that's, that's pretty much yeah. contribute yeah. first. <laughs> no, all right, so here, here's the thing. Any, anything you're interested in learning about is fair game, okay? And, and you, you could say, I absolutely know nothing about this topic, and that's okay. Because you now have nine months to learn about that topic, plus you can just show up and pick JJ's brain, my brain, these guys' brains. This part, one of the other reasons, by the way, for only having one presentation, Alex, is then you get a lot more chance for people to actually just hang out and talk after the presentation is over. It, it, you know, people by 9, 9.30, a lot of times people gotta start heading out, and so if you have a whole time of presentations, presentation ends up right at the door. So, uh, so you'll have plenty of time to learn something about whatever topic you'd like to know. Likewise, that's, 
I've heard little Roberts might have some hygiene issues. Um, so, 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 so we might instead bring beer in the chair. Okay, so, so it might be why we get so opposed to a lot. What if, who was asking what Roberts about, like, root kits? Have you studied root kits yet? Just go ahead. Yeah, like, like right. but that might be a lot of fun. You're talking about, like, root kits and other types of things. It smells like kits. I don't think they've done it in a long time, so. How it works, and, and there are people in there are really cool. Not really if you did want to, if you did want to catch a drink, I would suggest Gianni. Maybe have your experience. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the fun. experience there is a little better, oh. and it's it's it's, it's, a, it's much clearer. Sure. Yeah. I think yeah. Mark's, yeah. Mark's got a thousand, yeah. Mark's got a thousand different things. <laughs> Second favorite bartender in common presentation. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think John Rome by that. I don't know. 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 I don't I've got a lockpick set. I can give it to you. I can show you how, to, how it works. We can go through it. I'll co present with you. Yeah, sure. That work? All right. I love that. Cool. Yeah. 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 I've been wanting to do that. Um, <laughs> Mojo came. He got me advice. You, you know what? All right. Your name again, man? John. Hey, I, I'm interested in that too. Who, who's that? Biofideki is on the line. Hey, Bio. 2016. Hey. Bio, Bio said he was down for some of that. What's he present? Yeah, yeah. You're gonna present. Yeah, I'm down for some of that. And also, um, buddy of mine, Will, who came up there a while ago, man. There was one point where um, his uncle has um, a locksmith shop, so he was getting into that. So he's kind of got some background. He might be interested in that one too. Well, why don't you drag him in before we get to that presentation? Maybe he can jump in and help. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Cool. Cool. So it's going to be an increase in... See, look, that means getting easier and yeah. easier. Yeah. <laughs> you scored, John. You scored. They're all training you for a lot of time to people. So, of, so JJ and I also have a few uh, presentations that we will probably end up salting in here. We're going to tell you that right off the page. But some of those... They're the boring ones. Yeah, we're going to bring in a car. We're going to hack the alarm system and break in. Uh, we're probably going to do an, an attack on a Wi-Fi network, like this Wi-Fi network or something along those lines. We're going to attack the phone, uh, some other things planned further out. So, anyway. Take control of them. All right. So, I'm, I'm jumping back off. I was in the middle of doing some other stuff. I just wanted to be nosy. Um, there are Sounds good, Bob. Thanks for coming, man. Yep, yep. Roger, Roger. Mess up somebody's brakes and they can't stop, all kinds of stuff. But yeah, a little more of that. Hard, we're not going there yet. A little more of that hardware hacking. Um, yep. Getting into the. Hey, we we actually have Mike Barkas on the line too. Mr. Barkas, what you presenting on? <laughs> hey, I know where you live, man. Come on. Can you hear me? Oh. Hello. Mike. Yeah. What yeah. you presenting on, Mike? Um, I have an interest in web application security with zero experience, but um, I'd like to maybe team up with the people doing the website penetration testing. Okay, I am your name to that. Is that yeah. possible or something similar? Yeah, so that would be three months, uh, three presentations out. You, those of you that are on that one should definitely look at attending OWASP. Um, over the next three months, they've moved to Skookum. They were a classic, but they're at Skookum now. Um, it is uptown. But I would go there and say, hey, I'm doing a presentation at Practical Security, so hey, talk up and speed up. Um, I'm doing a presentation in four months, whatever it is, uh, on, on how vulnerable is my website, and can you kind of walk me through the OWASP top 10? Because they do a great job of educating you on the top 10 ways your website can get hacked. Then you're you're way ahead of the game. You're, you're, you'll be like, nobody's getting my website. Yeah, I don't think anybody is. I mean, I've built this system in a lot of organizations and using it, and no one I know of can 
Wait, no, a certain right of my server could be right, so so do not do not say that on the internet. Yeah. I yeah. promise oh, you. You, you, you are against this. Yes. Yeah. Between us. Between yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. We'll bleep that out. We'll bleep that out. Can you challenge the fact that knows what they're doing? You are just I'm just saying I think it's correct. Okay. All right, all right, good. Be very modest. You haven't said the name of the website, right? No, he has not. All right. So I mentioned to somebody that if we can't succeed in getting in, I will get in touch with them. Okay. So we, if we can find something, we will. And if he can't get in, then he's got somebody who works for him that will get involved. And between the two of them, they can't get in after JJ and I take a pass at it. You're probably in fairly good shape. But uh, there was a guy that came out and did an OWASP presentation. Uh, one of the last ones JJ and I attended. I'd be terrified to have him trying to get into my website. I just. I guess he would get in. He would get in. <laughs> he, he was out there going through this hack and he was talking about how he's talking to developers about how this is a real issue. And about, I don't understand. Like, you're not getting my code anyway. He's like, sometimes you just got to help a developer. Yeah, you never I say that. that. Oh, oh my God. Never. That it's, that it's a vulnerability in the software, the website software, not the server. Not, not like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's like fine. you hacked into my hosting provider and managed to get into the <laughs> Yeah, but, but the, problem, the, the, the problem is the problem is all of that's on the table though. That's true. When, that's you, true. when you say you can't that's hack my that's application, true. the whole stack is on the table. It's yeah. Not, yeah. But I'm saying if you're if you manage to break RDP on it or something, you know, it's a it's a it's a server. I mean it's a dedicated yeah. server yeah, for yeah, sharing. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> 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 you know, I mean they get scanned every day for that. I mean, all day long the logs are showing. He's using PPTP for a uh, VPN. What's that? Hey, he's he's yeah. Do you have a talent for them? <laughs> I don't think so. I know what you mean, though. You, yeah. you, you, you're talking just strictly the code versus. Right, right. Yeah, you feel confident yeah, about SQL injection and all that. Right, right. Yeah. That's, what I mean. yeah. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Yeah. And I, and I, and I can tell you, you're, you're a humble guy. You're not out there broadcasting. Like, don't tweet that. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 I'm like Brian. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen the guys that can do it in. And some of those folks attend some of those meetups sometimes, and I don't antagonize anybody. Yeah. 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 All right. So I think I think uh, I think we're good on this little um, intermission. This awesome. Thank you for your participation. Yeah. By the way, this meetup is going to rock. This already tonight rocks already. Tonight rocks, but this already within six months will be at twenty to thirty people, yeah. and you want to talk about fun? It gets really fun. Wait till we set up some lab, uh, like a like a test lab yeah, network and we're lock picking and we're bringing yeah. in lock picks, all those kinds of things. Oh yeah. Um, we're going to be working on building out as we do more of the hands-on stuff, building out stuff for everybody to play with and actually, you know, take a swing at the things we're showing you. So that kind of stuff, more and more, actually being able to. to, to <clears> um. So thanks for helping us kick this off. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. <clears throat> So, kind of, we're at a crossroads now. You get to decide which one we want to do first. We can go towards. We can do the nano, which I've hinted at a couple of times here, uh, first, or we can do serif first. It all depends on how you want to how you want to proceed on this. And I can do either or. Um, Are you going to do both of them? I'm going to do both of them. Okay. Start with one on top. All right, we'll start. We'll start with nano. We'll start with nano. So. What I'm going to demonstrate here is how to do a recon attack because 70 to 80 percent of any wireless, anytime a hacker is going to try to break your break what he's break into your place and get your stuff, he's going to spend most of his time sharpening that axe, and then he's going to he's going to get as much information as he can. I think was it Abe Lincoln said, if I had four hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend three and a half sharpening my axe. Get the information. Is it like the movie Hackers? It is not like okay. the movie Hackers. No, no, no. What it's like is, it, is like the, the movie. The virus talking. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the movie Swordfish. Oh, yes. Lots of screaming scenes. Lots of screaming Never! Never. Lots of you got to pound the keyboard. Then you walk around and do some more. Pound the keyboard. <laughs> if you hit it harder, you're breaking in quick. <laughs> And I, I don't know if you've noticed about hacking movies, they all have cubes, 3D things that are spinning around. That's how you're hacking. 
It's like it's like Jurassic Park. I like the Jurassic Park stuff because yeah. that's the most it's that's the coolest unit. Like it's stuff spinning and 3D and the dinosaurs <laughs> moving around. You know that's actually a real camera. It, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, it yeah. actually was. It was a it was a sixteen to the screensaver that goes around all sixteen. No, 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 no that was sort of Jurassic Park. Oh, oh, where she there's that gooey where she's getting into like the individual files. Yeah, yeah, a lot of the terminal stuff looked legit, so it's not surprising. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. No, you're fine. A little, little, uh, no, I like yeah, that's good stuff. I like I like movies. So anything, any movie trivia you can you can sprinkle into something. <laughs> so we'll start we'll start with nano. Um, so power up your nano. In my instance, what I have right here, and this is how most most people are going to do it, uh, is it's very discreet. If you are going to buy it, get the tactical case. Tactical case is very nice. Very, it looks like a phone. Looks just like a phone. I've, 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 war, I've war walked with this up and down Concord, uh, Union Street from here up to Buffalo Avenue. All right, hang on. Don't incriminate yourself. <laughs> yeah. I'm what? not saying what you said you did is illegal. I, I can't edit this just video. Be on my careful, I, just be careful not to say you did X. If X is illegal. Okay? So, so there you go. So X is not illegal because any as as someone as a wise man once said, any radio signal that passes through my body <laughs> is fair game. Is that, is that how the phrase? That's what that's what he said, but it's actually not legal. Anyway, okay. <laughs> well, the CFA pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so. Exactly. So <laughs> this 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 application would be that you've got it in your your phone case. You're just walking up and down, or you're sitting out in your you're sitting out in your FBI van. Got it to an external power source instead of the battery pack, and you're just reconning. So easy enough. Initially, I've already gone through and initially set mine up, and I've done all that fun stuff. Uh, really cool thing about this is you can tether this to the to another network, to a outside. You remember the the web, the picture I showed earlier about the web, about doing all that. Actually, I'll just pull it up because that's way easier. Um, so you can tether it in a couple of ways. Because this has two Wi-Fi radios, one can be used for your monitor, the other can be used to take sig internet signal and pump it through there, and there's your man in the middle. In this instance, I'm using my nice black phone too. More mm, nice. Yes, security security minded phone right here. If you if you've never heard of it, research it. One of the best security phones for people who are super paranoid. <laughs> So that's how it's transmitting Wi-Fi right now. It's it, I've got it tethered this way, or you can tether it using a USB cable. So they have a nice little uh, Hack Five created a nice little uh, little app that goes with it, tethered in. It says, "Oh, you're not tethered, tethered up." And now you and it gives you access to the GUI, which you're seeing right over here. So for for what we have right now, it's connected to the internet and it's transmitting out. So, go to our nice little bootstraps. What's that password? Huh? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Quick way to tell if you're connected, load bulletins. And yep, we are connected. So, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna demonstrate reconning and then actively picking a target and then making that target do uh, do whatever I want it to do. I'm going to make, in this instance, I'm going to make it display a web page. <laughs> okay, so we'll go. I, I like this example, so we're going to go back to it. We've been contracted by Bruce Wayne to audit his network because he suspects that there's someone out there doing something wrong. So he hires the Huggable hacker to come in and do this thing. He says, says, Josh, I need you to come in. I need you to audit my network and see if there's anybody doing anything malicious. I say, okay, Batman. Bruce Wayne, sorry. No, but you kind of look like Robin. I kind of look like Robin. <laughs> which, which, which Robin do I look like? Which generation Robin do I look like? I don't know. I'm just saying. Oh. It could be Robin. Is, am I the one that the joke would be to the pipe? No. <laughs> okay. So over here, on, over here on the menu, you can see that you have different options. For what we're going to do, we're going to start with Recon. And you have multiple options to do this. And again, this is all this is all on that device right there. <laughs> I'm going to start just a simple AP and client scan because I want to see what APs are available and then I want to see what clients are on that AP. So, and the selection here, 15, 30, continuous, that's just how aggressive and how you want to, and how you want to be. How much did you say this device costs? 
This is about, this is, the tactical dish is probably about 150 bucks. So, get another few seconds and boom goes the dynamite. That is what is in our immediate area around us right now in terms of APs and um, clients connected to it. Now, for me, we're gonna we're gonna focus mainly on this HB5 right here because that is we'll say that's Batman's network. Now, in this, like we keep talking about rules of engagement, we don't really care about anything else here except for this one HB5 right here. And for purposes for me, I'm only caring about this guy right here, okay? Because that guy is this computer right here. I don't know who everybody else is. I mean, I could if I could really look, but I'm not gonna, I don't really wanna, if just in case one of y'all. <laughs> Which one's yours? Uh, 2C right here. Okay. Mac address 2C, I know that because I went and did a config on my computer a little bit earlier, and I've got that. So, now, since we've got that recon, I'm gonna keep that open, open a new tab. And we're gonna go over, let's say, We'll go to filters here. Because you hit load bulletins earlier, is, is that because you're tethered to your phone? It's a, is, so that, is, that, is that live internet? Yeah, so that, that does a couple of things. It allows me to, first it allows me to know that I'm on the internet, because if it yeah. didn't load, it would say it's not on the internet. Okay. Secondly, if there's an update to the, to the firmware, you want to update the firmware. If there's, a, if there's a firmware patch or an update for any piece of software you're using, make sure you put it on as soon as you see it. That's just my PSA for it. <laughs> that's not just for this, that's for anything. Patches are a good thing. So, we're gonna focus on this guy right here. And so, if you click on that, you can immediately see there's a few options that we can add this to. Pine AP is the suite of tools used on the Pineapple that allows you to do broadcast uh, beacons. Like we were talking earlier, it's one of those, hey, I'm gonna send out what are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for this whole client of things. That beacon it sends out is requesting to everything. So you can add it to this. So which is what we're going to do right now. I think now. we just lost your... Uh, Did we lose me? Yeah. You might have de-off your Zoom. Did I de-off my Zoom? Oh, you might have a network change as well. Yeah. Did you change networks or something? Mm -mm. I have not changed networks. Give me a second. Let's go. I apologize. It does, it does seem that I have picked one. I mean, they, they can still hear you because it's coming through the mic on my machine, but... They, they may have we, we have a great recording of a bunch of very attentive people. Okay. Yeah. You guys look great. Keep it up. <laughs> um, let's see. Let me see if I can get it back real quick. And if I can't, then I'll just keep plugging. So right, that's fine. Yeah. All right. If we need to, if it's a big deal, I can turn the camera around and shoot it. I think we should. I'm not going to worry about it for right now. Yeah, let me just let me just do yeah. this. Yeah, if we can pull it back and get the screen in, JJ. Yeah. Hang on a second, Mike. Mike, sorry, I don't have a two camera screen for you. That's okay. I'm all none. That's more better. More better. I'm gonna run that scan again because right. can you JJ, can you turn it into the, the camera just a touch? I turned it yes at all. Awesome. <laughs> now you look like a professor. <laughs> <laughs> especially that especially that like sweater vest. Yes, the sweater vest. It, it really brings it, I think. It's it's hard 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 hard. Together, yeah. yeah, it really does. Pretty sharp. It really so does. quick quick story about this vest real quick. Uh, yeah, I've got, not, got a million of them. Quick story about this is the this actually used to belong to my father. So, yeah, old second man. gen. Second gen right there. So where is 2C? I wonder if I kicked myself off here. I think I might have. <laughs> I did. Did you de-off me? I de off myself by accident. <laughs> so, great example of paying attention to what you're doing and not de-offing your, <laughs> your test machine. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. They're still there, so good. Let's do a quick rescan of this. Yeah. 
Are you starting something new, uh, white tie hacking? White, white tie hacking. White tie. <laughs> Next presentation, have a dinner jacket. It's, it's the fancies. Instead of white hat, white tie. Hmm. So you got two GUIs open, does that matter? No, it does not. Uh, one was one was for uh, one was so I could keep this up, and the other is so I can uh, check on this in a second. I apologize. Let's see if it's going on here. So if config tag A, yeah, that's two C. So where is it? Do any of those expand? I need the HP card expand. No, if there's anything underneath it, it's it's going to show here, and then it's. So I have no idea where. Did it connect to the phone? It is connected. Yes. To the pineapple or to the HP5? So this one's connected to HP5, one of these access points right here. And so I'll continue with it and I'll, I'll continue with that. And because that's going to be kind of hard to see here in a second. But we'll just, for the time being, actually, you know what? We will. I've got a great idea. <laughs> Use my phone. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to use my phone to see about the phone. Mac address, FD. So if I go to FD. Let go. So that's to not hold up this process any longer. We want to connect to, we want to de-off and connect to another uh, device. And we want to make that device then connect to our pineapple. So we're creating the man in the middle at that point. So what we would do is, depending on, again, if we were doing a client side or a full AP side, we would choose HP5 as the full AP. And we would add it to the pool or we remove it from the pool. Uh, I wonder if it's already there. See filters. Oh, no. So it's never no no crime no cry, crime in doing what I'm about to do right now. So we'll add all that to the Pine AP filter, and then I'll show you a little bit about that. But what you would do is you would add either the entire AP or the entire um, the entire the entire AP or the, just the client and. That oh baby, this always works so much better in my house. <laughs> so we're just gonna add these guys right here because that's kind of cool. So we're gonna add to the S to the pool. So that means it's going to basically spoof that SSID. Not yet. I'm just adding it. I'm just adding it to my to my pool at this point. Okay, giving you. Correct. So you could so like later you could, you could add multiple and then potentially spoof multiple at the same time. Correct. Which is what I'm and then you can also if you really again if you want to do like I said a DOS attack, this is the point where you just send those packets and, and you can multiply it as aggressively as you want it to. If you want them to feel like they just they're just getting there and it just takes away from them, that's kind of cool. You can do that with one. But if you just really want to make sure they're never going to do anything, you can just do 10, and it's going to stay there until two things happen. You stop it, or the power gets lost. So in this sense, that battery's got about a 10-hour lifespan. So after 10 hours, it's going to stop, but until then, so. But we're not going to do that, because I think one of those might be primed, and I don't want to knock the prime off. <laughs> you get, get you lost. I'm our, our reporting off as well. So. Yeah, that's why I'm not going to do it. <laughs> not going to do, do that. I don't know. So if you go into filters, you're gonna get you're gonna see this right here. So right now it is in deny mode. And I, I'd have to turn this on, but I'm not gonna turn this on. You can switch it to allow mode, but deny mode says any of the AP, any of the MAC addresses that are in here are not allowed to connect to that. Everything else is, but not the but but not the total up there unless you switch it to allow. So this is just a basic ACL list. So um then we're gonna go. Here's where the magic is. Here's the magic. Here's the magic Pine AP suite. 
With this, you can go in and you can just tell it what you want it to do, okay? You can allow associations, which if you're familiar with associations, it's one of those, that ASACL list that we just had, the access list, I'm gonna say anything that was on that list, let's go ahead and start doing associations. So that's anything that's allowed or denied. Log probes, I wanna log anything in your act and then your sign request. Make sense? You have a, you have a okay, cool. Um, then you have capture SSID, so anything that it sends out a probe request to, so my, my pine, my pineapple is going to send out a request. It's going to say, I'm looking for this. Are you this? Well, yes, I am. And then it's going to take that, and it's going to capture it over into this pool here. So this pool, as it fills up, it'll stay there because you can tell it to save all that, and then you can turn it off, turn it back on, and it's still going to be there. The more you get here, the more chance you have of getting anybody in a given location. So if you're, if you're straight up black hat hacker, and you're just walking around getting APs and you know your TW, free TWC Wi-Fi's, uh, your AT and T's, Mom's Kitchen, you know, Starbucks. Take your pick. It's all in there, and it's going to broadcast that out. Say, Hey, I'm Starbucks. Hey, I'm free Wi-Fi. Hey, I'm AT and T. And people who have that on their thing, on their devices, to say, Hey, I know you. Let's connect, and then you're in the tangled web at that point. And, and interestingly enough, uh, every call I call. It's programmed to auto connect to AT and T. Anybody got anybody got an AT and T phone? No, no, no. no, no. You understand? iPhone. That's what I'm saying. iPhone. That's what I'm saying. AT and T iPhone. No, 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 no. no, no, no. You, you understand? No, no. iPhone. Every single iPhone, Verizon, T-Mobile, oh. etc. I'm sorry. It's baked into iOS because of AT and T's original contract with Apple that the iPhone operating system will automatically join any Wi-Fi network main ATT Wi-Fi. So you- It's a thing of beauty. <laughs> I haven't turned off on all my devices. I did, yeah. That, that's something you should do, if you, in my opinion, if you have an iPhone. But you have to go to where there's ATT Wi-Fi, and, and, then get join, and then go in and turn off auto join. Or I can just turn it on here. So as you can see, as we've been sitting here, it's actually picked up because those those devices actually have HP5 in their saved list somewhere. So it's got that sitting right there. So if you leave it on long enough, eventually it's going to start pulling a bunch of other. Um, like I'll show you this. So we can say I can hit beacon response. Oh, I got to turn it on first. Log associations. Yep. Log probes. Associations? Yep. There we go. Wi-Fi off. <laughs> so you leave it on long enough. And then you have to, of course, save settings. Hopefully this won't kill anything. Still something like going to Schmoocon or something. Yeah. So if we go back over to our filters, we go up into our pool. That's what that's what people's phones and devices have responded with so far. Again, you leave this on long enough, and eventually your device is going to broadcast out what it's got. So, if anybody wants to turn the phone off right now, that'd probably be good. <laughs> oh, so we're gonna. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off right now. So you're saying one of those is my phone? Potentially, yes. How would I know? Well, well, are one of those are one of those yours? That's not my network at home, no. Okay, so if but, but you leave your phone on and periodically it looks for the networks it knows. Okay. That's how it auto joins. Which okay. means that it's going to look for your home network right. and, and that device will pick it up. Mine's not listening to And there's software like Evil AP that will automatically, completely automatically, you ask for the network and it'll go, oh yeah, here I am. And then you automatically join because your phone is set to do that. And then it automatically SSL strips all your traffic. That is, that is if just, you don't notice, it starts capturing your password. Yeah, that's just part of the Wi-Fi stuff. So. so here's your phone, and then on that, you've got, <laughs> your, you've got your SSID access list. Phone, phone list. Sounds like, what? you got this, two, three. So you probably got 10, 15 on there. I don't know. how. you probably got preferred places that you go. you probably got your Starbucks, like I said. you probably got your home on there. I got my home. you probably got your work on there. I work at home. Okay, so you've probably got to go to your home and work on it. Yeah, so you've got your home and work on it. <laughs> but that makes it easy for us. One place to get it all. Yeah. One, stop, just, one stop shopping for how <laughs> <laughs> So, and like you said, you said earlier, periodically, this is going to send out a request, a beacon request that says, I'm looking for this. Okay. The pineapple. Brian, do you have, do you have my yellow one? 
in my yellow marker. So why don't you pop up there if it does? Right? Yeah, it's just gotta sit there long enough. Okay. Well, hang on. It, it's fine. So Josh, is that the blue light? Well, we got to do this. Yeah, this yes. isn't gonna work so well. So, so, like, 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 so yeah. maybe if I open a web browser, it's yeah. oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's turned. I turned it off right now because I because oh, okay. you can actually. You did it for. I I did it just for a second or two because because. Uh, you know, you can get inundated with a huge list of things. Just, just, tr just trust me. Any, any device, unless you, I don't even know if you turn auto join off on the network. If it, it's still, it's still is going to send it. Let's still look for it. It still looks so. It's yeah. weird. Wi-Fi is terrible. To, to get it all the way down, you have to do. Um, let's let's say Android. You have to turn off Wi-Fi, and you have to go in deep into your settings and tell Google to not try to use Wi-Fi for geolocation, because even if you turn Wi-Fi off. Behind the scenes, Google will still, unless you flip that other setting, which is buried, will still send out beacons to try to figure out where you are based off Wi-Fi hotspots just for geolocation. It's, it's for your own. So it's still, yeah, it's yeah. still is looking for. Yeah. Does anybody have a computer? Yeah, does anyone have a problem with that? No, because it does it. It does. It's gonna do it. Yeah, I just, I just I yeah. find me. Yeah. So even if I even if like I don't have my Wi-Fi turned on right now, but my phone is still like my phone. Are you on Android or iOS? Yeah. Because your phone is still at least polling for Wi-Fi hotspots. Yeah. Now it may not it may not look for your home network. It may not ask to request to join. So. It's not necessarily going to register the exact same way, but it is doing a certain amount of Wi-Fi activity unless you turn off other settings as well. Okay, so even though I have my Wi-Fi turned totally off, when I say Wi-Fi still active, when when the Google Maps application says, "Hey, do you want to check for like, do you want to improve your location by checking down or not?" Uh, do you have that? You have that yeah. off as well? <laughs> then it may not be falling yet. But your GPS is really inaccurate. So if you want, so I'll, and I'll throw this up there too. If, if you really, if you want to see this too. So. You really, if you really want to be, I'll knock that off. Sorry about that. Now we'll refresh here. There's a lot of stuff in this room, so, yeah. so give it give it give it in a few yeah. seconds. So now, if you, if you really if you really want to be scared, you can actually look in your Wi-Fi settings, and you'll actually see these now broadcasting as potential things to be to access. I've got it turned off. Where I've got access association turned off, so you won't be able to connect to it. Uh, but so there is so broadcast. Okay, okay, so that the pineapple is now well, it's it's sucking in and then rebroadcasting. It was just kind of a round circle. Yeah. So do you ask for it? Oh yeah, that's me. I'm here. So give it enough time, so. If someone has <laughs> it's uh, uh, a tax word tool, I just tried to join uh, that one for now. I, I, and that probably triggered it because it. Yeah. 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 So someone, so we'll we'll try this. We'll give someone to an act. Oh, you know what? I'll make an accent. I'll make a request. Because Mike, Mike Marcus, can you try to join a network? Who's the net? Yeah. I've been trying. It hasn't worked. Okay. <laughs> So I'll make I'll make a probe request because I'm feeling I'm feeling a bit froggy today. No, nope, can't can't purchase that. Log in, log into your bank. Yep, log in. <laughs> so as you can see, it's slowly starting to populate this list. So, so just the fact that it's gonna it's gonna broadcast that out. So. <laughs> it takes takes a little bit, but you can think, see. And, that, and that's an example of security, uh, the, the, the continuous struggle between uh, convenience and, and and the security of of systems. Like you, you want to make people, they want to design Wi-Fi so it's convenient for users. Hey, go, da, da, da. It, but that also exposes these kinds of things. It goes back to what I said earlier about how Wi-Fi was inherently designed to be connected to. <laughs> It's working. It's it's doing its job perfectly, but so it wasn't security. So it wasn't designed for security. Who's got an iPhone, by the way? I'm, I'm on this topic. Have you updated to 921? It just came out yesterday. No, I just have to look at right. it. Don't wait. Go ahead and do it. 
okay? Because there's an attack that they just fixed in 921, specifically a Wi-Fi. And the way it works is you go to do a Starbucks or whatever, somebody's running evil AP, and they pop up a captive portal that looks just like Starbucks captive portal where you have to click through. Okay? Well, there's a bug in iOS where the cookies that are issued in the captive portal environment also are present in Safari. Okay? So they can spoof cookies for anything in the captive portal like Starbucks or your bank or Gmail or whatever. Okay? And then those show up in your browser and now they can leverage those to start attacking all of your accounts, okay? And so they partitioned that off in 921, so there are a ton of attacks out there that are leveraging this, partitioned it off so that the captive portal cookies are completely separate from the actual browser cookies. But if you're not running 921, you're vulnerable to that. And it's part of the Wi-Fi implementation on iOS that's, again, all about convenience and so on, but just has security implications. So, that's, that's, again, that's a high-level view of this. Um, you, there, there are more granular attacks you can do with that. I'm actually going to touch on exactly what he just talked about with uh, my, next, my next little toy. So uh, is there any questions about this? Anything else you'd like to see? Um, an, another meetup I would like to do is to go in-depth into these modules. People write modules to do so many different things. Again, you can write an automatic module that'll strip SSL through editor cap and get credentials like that. And you never yeah, know. You we never definitely know. need to do that. Um, so that's that's going to be that that's going to be that particular meetup with that one. So I'm I'm working on that one. So well, yes, please. Sorry, real sure, quick. How do you write a module? Is it like a Python script? Uh, like it's it's Perl. Oh, um, tasty, tasty. <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't want to make another song. So what? So wasn't that a song, Pearl, something, necklace, or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Parkus. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this. We're guy trying off. to keep this beat up PG at a max. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and turn turn uh, minion off. Um, and I'm gonna do. We're gonna turn Marcus off. What? No, no, minion. Oh. Oh. That's fine. <laughs> What's happening? Sorry, Marcus. I love you. So my next, my next toy I want to show you, and this is this is something that, in the truest sense, it was hacked together. Okay. Zoom. Yes. In the truest sense, Seraph. So if you see his rouge AP, that's a shade of red, by the way. <laughs> I saw that earlier. What just happened? Oh, I was going to say, he's going to be AP. Yeah, that, was that, was that, was that was intentional. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was blushing. <laughs> that, that was a blushing AP. It's one of those. <laughs> it's one of those. I know how bad it, it, it hurts when I misspell things. So I do it intentionally sometimes just to see if he notices. Oh, yeah. I got it. I'm going to start using it's that. It's a test. Yeah. I, 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 I played 15 misspellings in this report with Wells Fargo just to see if you catch them. <laughs> As funny as that sounds, uh, we'll just go with that. All right. So, Seraph is a device that I put together using several different other uh, programs and pieces of hardware. Um, it was originally designed, uh, the original incarnation of this is something called Library Box. It's a project done by a guy named Jason Griffey out of Tennessee. His original intent was to be able to provide, you've seen these uh, like library boxes that are all uh, like my little libraries, you familiar with that? His idea was to do something similar to that except do it in a virtual format so that people could have access to all sorts of library resources, okay? You could go on something like Project Gutenberg, download all of their books, have it on a device this big, you know, we're talking 200, 250,000 books sitting in a space that big and with any mobile device, log on and get a, download the book. That was the idea behind that. But then he updated it. <laughs> and what he did was he, he baked in with Library Box, he baked in Pirate Box, which is another, which is another P2P sharing piece of software open source that allows you to, again, share files P2P style, but on a hyper local uh, network. We're talking, you know, it's this device broadcasting on SSID. You upload your files, you download the files, never connected to the broader internet, just you, another computer, and this device. 
So you're, the idea with that is you're trying to circumvent rules and whatnot, but he took it and made library box out of it. What I did was, to, was take his original idea uh, and then hack the pieces out of it, and we have Serif. Now, if anyone's on their device right now, they can look up, and there should be an SSID broadcasting right now called Practical Security. You are more than welcome to connect to that if you want. I will tell you that nothing bad will happen, I promise you. <laughs> I would turn your spot. <laughs> You might get rickrolled if you don't turn your mouth. <laughs> oh no, anonymous! Oh, they're coming to get us! So it's a captive portal, and, I, and I'm gonna, I'll turn it up right for you guys to see real quick, but you see it's going nuts right now. It's transmitting data. So what this does is it creates a, and I'm gonna pause this because it gets really scary. <laughs> actually, I actually took, took the uh, anonymous video off. Christian Slater going to it. No, he's not. Okay. not. It's, he's sitting there banging on the keyboard. But, but somebody next door just saw this network and joined up. Oh, no. oh my God. Because <laughs> it's, again, it's open. Someone's freaking out right now. They might want to be weird. <laughs> <laughs> There's that anonymous. <laughs> but what this does. Can we rename it FBI Man 22? So, I, so and I, I, we'll, we'll get into the file structure of this in a second. <laughs> Again, back to the association. It will associate because it's a captive portal. I've set it up to where it has a captive portal functionality. So you find it, it says, hey, this is a portal, go to it. Like you would go to any bank that says, gives you terms and conditions, except that video pops up there. Or, if you're in the mood to doing something else, where'd I put it? Downstairs. <laughs> Say you're wanting to do something, and I think you said it earlier, um, you want to troll somebody. Oh. All right, if I didn't say it, I was thinking it. <laughs> you control people? <laughs> oh, God. You can rickroll people. Or you can so well. Or you can go straight up happy hour virus and get out, and get out of work. Oops, let me turn that on. Happy hour virus. If you ever want to get out of work. Happy hour virus. <laughs> <laughs> now these are just these are just little fun ways to screw with people, but some of the more insidious ways to screw with people would be something like this. That's convincing. Yep. But here comes here comes here comes the real real nastiness of this. What we'll do is I'm gonna do you guys see the uh, last pass fishing attack? Lost pass. Uh, Lost pass. Yes. And if you look at the name of it, it's called serif.land. You can rename that anything you want to name it. Yeah. Facebook.com. Facebook.com, Facebook.land, whatever. So what we'll do here is I'm going to SSH into this bad boy. Six, eight. This is, this is where if you're not actually feeling a little anxious, you should start feeling a little anxious of that. <laughs> Because this is totally doable. You can. And what's you can, the title of your talk is "Why I'm Paranoid." Right. Yes. You go to you go to a Starbucks. You get your laptop out. It auto joins ATT Wi-Fi. You go log into Facebook. And you know it's Facebook. How do you know it's Facebook? How do you know you joined the real ATT Wi-Fi? So we're gonna go to. How do you know you're in a Starbucks? Now we have some bad things. Use the VPN. We'll get. We'll get. We're, 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 yeah. we're going to be talking about takeaways. Uh, yeah. Yes. Great question. Great question. Yes. VPN. VPN. All right. So. 
in this directory, I, now you guys are familiar with, with what I've just done, right? I've SSH into the box, and now I'm looking at the file structure for right. the Facebook page I went to. What we're currently viewing is index.html. But if you want to. I need to Facebook. So what? <laughs> Facebook. There you go. Facebook. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I want to tail a, a certain file here. So I'm going to tail tech f auth.txt. And I'll explain why in a second. This is beautiful. So, like Brian was saying earlier, you have you don't know if this is the actual Facebook, whatever. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say J A Jenkins. Uh, use, use your real password. Just yep, for illustration. A, I am at AOL. Because yeah, we're recording this. <laughs> yeah. So J A Jenkins. That way you won't forget your password. Right. You always look it back up on the video. So and I'm going to put in my password. <laughs> okay. So now watch the magic here. And then I'm going to log in. Oh no, nothing happened. Except I got a log right here for Jay Jenkins at AOL.com and the password. Boom. Boom. That's a little PHP magic right there. That's a mic drop. Yeah. Presentation's over, guys. Uh, come back next month. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to show you is. It's super scary. Wi-Fi is very, very vulnerable. So, but, but I think the other takeaway on this is this isn't that sophisticated to set up and do. Like, like this isn't like Josh. I know you spend a lot of time putting together a presentation, and I don't want to belittle you that. No, no, that's. But okay. this is something that people are walking around with these things. Hundred fifty dollar device. Oh no, no, no. This, is, this isn't the hundred and fifty dollar device. This is the forty dollar device that I that I that I. Put this open is, WRT on. It's and not it's, just Josh. There's other people that have devices like this and stuff going on all over the place. Right. You're sitting and, and next to somebody in Starbucks and they're rocking that in their pocket and they're they're capturing passwords. And they're wearing a creepy sweater on white side. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, they, yeah, they, 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 you, but you look at you go, they've got an evil AP in their pocket. It's, it's so, like, usually I'm going to be sitting there and I'm going to be sitting there reading something like, you know, how not to get hacked in public. The the, yeah, the, the economist, yeah. you know, you know, Washington Post. I'm going to be sitting at an airport with something that says CLT free Wi-Fi. Please connect. I've already gone there and I've already done a little W get magic and pulled down their landing page. Right. So throwing you, it up on here. So you, you go to Facebook, you download the, the right. sign in page right. and so but what if you, I mean, what, what if you're, you know, using the URL with HTTPS so it can see? SSL strip is an amazing thing. <laughs> you, so you, you can still go Starbucks, so. and they can buy, they can get me even if I'm using SSL? So again, this, th yeah, because this relies on the fact that you're not paying attention and you connect to it. This has no access to the internet right now. Okay. This is completely. You don't cool. know that, that. You think something's wrong with Facebook. You Basically, tried to log in, it didn't work, you're like, well, something's wrong with connection. Right. right. What's right. wrong? You just tried it doesn't matter because right. he's got your Facebook account. So what's the first thing you do? And guess what? You use that password on the website. You use that right. password on, and now all of a sudden the hacker is just logging into everything. It's a secure so information. Now it has a blackmail material. It's over. Right, right, right. Leverage for the next thing. Yes, I know what password you're probably using for your Gmail. That's so all. You're ready. So if I, it's just, I'm just trying to make sure I understand the process of what you're talking about. Okay. Um, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So you have you have a device. It broadcasts. You trick somebody into connecting. Correct. Right. Because I'm because um, I'm either using something that's going to auto connect, or I'm relying I'm relying on my geography, i.e. the airport. Right. Or I'm listening I'm listening for what networks you request, and I'm telling you, oh yeah, I'm that network. Gotcha. Right, and you auto join because you auto your phone is set to auto join. And it's I, easy not to look at your Wi-Fi stuff to see what you're connected to. You go, oh, Wi-Fi! I see a little red, little I, radio wave. I, I hate I'm McDonald's and Starbucks for this reason with a new iPhone because oh, you know, you go to a drive-through, you drive by too close, and all of a sudden your internet stops working. I'm like, what? 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 And it's because it auto joined that AT&T affordable network because it's usually abysmally slow, and everything stops working until you get away from it. TWC too. Because it auto joined. Yes. <laughs> So, so, so then after that, sorry, I just want to make sure I, I'm fully understanding the whole thing. Um, so after I'm connected to that Wi-Fi network, let's say I, I'm trying to go to Facebook. So right. in my browser, I would say Facebook.com, right? Mm -hmm. um, this would intercept that request, present me with the fake Facebook. Right. Now, and, and this, and this, this is a more, this is again, this is a very, very, very targeted attack. If you go to Facebook, 
hp5.com, it's going to take you to facebook.com. If you go to hp5.co, it's going to take you to the Facebook landing page. Right. In that instance, but that's just basic. It, it's really about how dedicated somebody is because it could be parsed out. You ask for uh, Gmail and it could give you a Gmail login. You ask for Facebook, ask and give you a Facebook one. It's all programmatic. So they could have the top 20 or 50 things that people typically go to set to just rock. Right. So, so actually, really all I have to do is join the network and then it'll just pop up the browser for me and take you to this page right here. And if you request something that's not on there, yeah, it's just going to be good. Yeah, it's Captain Portal, Portal, Captain Portal can. can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. But it, it can just sit there passively and wait for you to try to log into something. Okay. And okay. and as long as it's one of the sites that's already configured to give you the login page, they got your they're they're your dad. They but but this work, though, you have to connect to the wrong network. But you don't have to know you're connecting to the wrong network. Okay. Your phone will do it for you. So when you do that, you go into your one password. So assuming, assuming you're, you're not auto populating any of those things, and you go one password and drop it. It's going to capture like if I, if I, if, if I uh, only if I've connected to the Starbucks network will I connect to the big Starbucks network. Yeah. Right. If you haven't set the Starbucks network to auto join, but hang on, don't think that makes you safe. Okay. You have this home network. Right. right? You're you walk into Starbucks, your phone everywhere you go, by the way, is saying, Hey, right. hey you know, are you out there? Are you out there? And someone says, you yeah, right. he just listens for you to ask for a network and goes, Oh yeah, that's me. Right. It sets that network up, and then your and phone you already set auto join that. Right. Okay, more than realize. And it auto joins. Right. Okay, I mean, I. Right. Right. That's sad. You, I can sit. Yes. And it's the name yeah. Evil AP. Right. You right. sit in right. Starbucks running Evil AP, yep. and That's you will just constantly join your um, your Evil AP network and get frustrated because you don't have a bridge out. Well, how about have a bridge out? Now, actually, I just tether it to my unlimited karma hotspot, okay? And so you're like, wow, Starbucks Wi-Fi is really slow today. But you're still using it. But you're still using it, okay? And, and, and by the way, anything that I don't have already set up, I'll let you get out to. That's fine. It's just slow because it's not as fast as, you know, whatever. But you ask for Facebook, I got you. you and and I, you got to get on the Facebook. So let's, let's be honest. Everyone's got to get on the Facebook. You got to get the Twitter. You got to get the Facebook. There's got to be a cat joke or something going on. Right. It's important. Right. It's important. And by the way, you go to Facebook, and because because I'm intercepting it, okay, you were already logged in. You had a cookie. You send that cookie. Thank you. I don't even, I don't even have to capture at that point, okay? At that point, I can take the cookie. And I can basically make it look like Facebook's not working, and I can let that cookie yeah, session yeah, hijack it. Right, I'm you. Right. I change your password. Boom. Right, I'm, I'm in. I'm you. The moral of the story is don't trust any network. Be worried about that one. Yeah, we've got. I got. I got a few of those takeaways. Yeah, we. Yeah, we've yeah, got some ways you can protect yourself. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, That's awesome. So right. now, now, now that you guys have been sufficiently yeah. super depressed, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there, well, there, there's, there's, there, there's a couple ways to defend. Full speed, full speed. Oh, yep. Yeah, make yeah. this happen for us. Make this happen. Well, I, I have this. these Wi-Fi resort on vacation. Here, if, you know, years past. And right, and then there was always worried there. about that. Yeah. But if you join that network, yeah, it's still in there. No, but I removed it. Okay, all right, but. Uh, and I changed my password when I got back from vacation. <laughs> so we got um, a couple of takeaways. Uh, always for you personally, if you're setting up a device, your AP, always set your AP up with WPA2. Okay, whether it's with a whether it's with a pre-shared key, something more local for or your pre-shared key. By the way, should be something like one two three four five six. Yes, and because Star nobody will ever guess that. <laughs> or set it up. Or set up pre -shared WPA. anyway. Don't don't use. Don't use anything less than WPA2, okay? But, but seriously, um, you only type it once on a device. Generate something random, 16 characters, 24 characters. You go on track, this is such a pain to type in, but you only have to type right. it once, right. okay? If, if, you put it, if you put in an eight-character password, gosh forbid you actually use a dictionary word as your WPA password. I'm your daddy again. I mean, you're, every time a device joins your network, there's a, a transaction that occurs, and it's in the clear, as in anybody can capture that transaction and take it home and brute force it offline, I've done this, brute force it and get into your network. 
I, I went to ShmooCon with uh, Mojo, and we were sitting in, in a, we rode the train up to DC, and we we're sitting in the, the business class, and this group of people comes in, and Mojo's goofing around, and all of a sudden this new Wi-Fi network pops up, because one of them had a hotspot. He's like, I wonder, and he, he captured, packet captured somebody in that group joining their hotspot, and brute forced it. And it was two dictionary words with a dash between them. He brute forced it while we were sitting there. Okay, about 20 minutes. Uh, always use VPN if you're in a place that you don't trust. VPN is just generally a great idea anyway, because um, it encourages you to always think about what you're doing, what you're connecting to, and how you're connecting. To. Okay, so, so let's practical scenario on this. You're at the Starbucks. You're at you know, in the library, you're wherever, and you're, you join the Wi-Fi network, okay? How do you know that somebody's not evil AP? You don't, okay? If you have already, this is important, already set up a VPN account with a VPN provider on a trusted network, then your VPN software has already exchanged encryption keys with your VPN provider, and it's a two-way trust relationship. So now if they try to spoof your VPN provider, your VPN software is going to go, whoa, 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 something's wrong here, okay? You connect to your VPN provider, make sure when you set up your VPN software that you've checked the checkbox that says send all traffic through the VPN provider, because if you haven't, you're still going to get hacked, okay? But assuming that's checked, as soon as you connect to VPN and your VPN software validates the server and the server validates you, Okay, then every, and you have that all traffic going through a VPN settings or none, once that VPN connection's up, we're out of luck. That, nobody's messing with you past that point without something wrong with the protocol or the encryption of VPN, which is a whole other attack. Very hard, typically by comparison. It protects you on that local network. Correct. I mean, there's an endpoint that the VPN dumps out on, and that's right. a whole other story. So this is where we do product recommendations. Um, we don't get any referrals off of this. No, I think some referrals are going to be but. <laughs> PrivateTunnel.com is a great VPN provider. There's tons of them out there, particularly like them for one reason, and that is when you buy bandwidth from them, it doesn't expire. So you can buy uh, 500 gigs for 50 bucks, and you can use a gig today, 50 gigs a year from now, and your other you know, 400 and, and you know, 49 gigs will sit there until you need them. Okay? I think it's the makers of OpenVPN. Yes, it is that the people who make OpenVPN run it. So PrivateTunnel.com is my preferred. Um, shop uses well, yeah, I used it after he said, so send him the referral. But I, I've been enjoying it. I and, joke and, on referral. and you can multi uh, connect devices. They're, yes, real, they're real lenient. You can yeah. have 20 devices connected, it's all can, based on the band. Yeah, so okay. just connect all your devices. They're cool with that. Yeah. Um, it's pretty yeah. awesome. And they've got they've got endpoints yeah. all, over, all over, the world. over the world. So just you find them. Pick a US one, one typically if you want things to work. Right. Um, if you look like you're going to some servers from, let's say, Indonesia. Um, they not Don't, sure that you're legit. Uh, this one kind of goes without saying. Never trust open Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, if you if you've got one thing tonight, that's the one you get. Yeah, because you saw. I mean, again, you saw the little guy right there. He's open. He's just waiting. Um, we tra it's a trap. It's Admiral Akbar. It's a trap. Get away from it. Um, turn off AT and T. Auto connect like we touched on earlier. I oh, skipped. Uh, I skipped two. Oh, I'm sorry. Use software-based uh, IDS and IPS, that's intrusion detection and intrusion prevention. You have, uh, we use that on all of, our, all of our firewalls and our locations, and that classic. Um, we, uh, it's great, um, it'll tell you if someone's tr actively trying to do something, and if you set it up correctly, it will actively prevent them as best as it can. Is there something like that for your home network that's good? Or? Um, some, some, some. That would be a great session, actually. Yes, um, there's some commercially available, there's some commercially available uh, home routers that do exactly what you've asked. Uh, but yeah, that would be a great one to sit around and. So we, we are um, in the process here of moving over to a PFSense router, and there, part of that will end up leading to a session because when I've got it fully built out, I'll be running Snort and some other things actually on that router. Um, and Snort would be the uh, Snort's Snort a great example of that. Uh, and and so I'll be documenting all that, and then we'll have a presentation it's on all open source. All open source. Oh, I had to cue that. Yeah. Cue that up. All open source. Um, I'll also be recommending hardware. So basically, the idea would be that as you, as as the world continues to become more and more of a hostile environment, 
on the internet, you're going to need to get off of the net gears and the Belkins and so on because they're not keeping up. Okay. And, and so what's happening already is the InfoSec aware technologists are moving towards controlling the router and separating Wi-Fi from the router. Very similar, so we have um, Ubiquity Network's Wi-Fi access points. They're completely separate from the router, and if one's effective, the other's not, and so on. Um, so a, a session, once I have everything tricked out, will be the PFSent setup, and the hardware that's out there is running in the $100 to $200 range. So that's, what, that's, that's close yeah. to what you pay for a but, but, you, but you're going to spend more because if you separate out the, the Wi-Fi, it's a different device. Okay? But at that point, you can actually keep your home network secure. What's happening is the vulnerabilities on uh, consumer routers are being detected and leveraged before the consumer router manufacturers can get patches out, in some cases by numbers of months, if not years. And you sit there and you think you're fine, and your router's gotten hacked, and every bit of traffic going through it is being sniffed. Well, but there's, there's, this is another topic too. But your home router, a lot of times, uh, or routers like in businesses like this, uh, they're not used. A lot of times, they're not used to get the data. They don't care about the data at HP5. They, oh, care, they care about the network access. They just want your network access because they're anonymous, basically, at that point. Or they're, 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 they're leveraging it from it, from it to attack somebody <coughs> or to do DDoS. <coughs> using your router and you know, 50,000 others to attack somebody by flooding them with traffic. And when and somebody, and, and, and your internet's probably you're like, ah, I called Time Warner, it's not Time Warner. And when somebody comes calling on, on something illegal going on, they're going to come to the business and you're going to be like, what? Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, so we'll, this is all, um, I think there was a question actually on the routers earlier on one of these. Um, this is all, tied into some of that infrastructure. A lot of what we're trying to do is prototype the things that we would recommend as we get for them. You look soothing now, Josh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a heroin it's, hour. It's hair. Tell you a story about the blue lights here in a minute. Um, Location-based association software. Uh, I started to touch on this, but then I said I'd wait till it. Uh, Black Phone has a great uh, location-based Wi-Fi functionality on it. It will associate Wi-Fi based on locations you tell it to trust. Yeah. So if I'm at my house, it's going to trust that because based on geolocation, it's going to say all, the, all of these things should do that. That's it, it's, it's not in iOS, and there are no software packages that can do it because Apple does not support it on an API level. But that smarter Wi-Fi manager, that Bitly URL, um, is the general edition of what's on the Black Phone. The Black Phone has that exact software, but it's just Black Phone edition. It has a few more features. Um, the advantage with that kind of software is it can go all the way to the point where if you're physically geolocated here, it knows that the HP5 network is okay here. But if you go home and the HP5 network shows up at home, it knows something's wrong. That, that would help your yeah. scenario with your home network. And also, as soon as you geolocate leave, this it turns your Wi-Fi off because you're not in a known good Wi-Fi location, Wi-Fi off. And until you turn it back on somewhere else and say, join this network, it's not going to log. When you do that, it goes, okay, you, you said this location, this Wi-Fi network's good, I'll save it. We can go remove it, but outside of you manually choosing to turn it on and join a network, it's just not. That'd be another great topic I'd like to hear about, too, from somebody that knows more about it, and that is um, how not to trust your cell phone carrier's network. Um, so black phone. Because a lot of people, I think a lot of yeah. times people think, well, I won't be on my phone. I'm going to go. I'm going to go jump on Verizon or AT and T. They yeah. seem trustworthy, right? So GSM is totally cracked. Um, it's people are able to pull everything you do off the cell network uh, with sufficiently advanced technology, uh, which costs about eight hundred bucks. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely talk about how you protect yourself. But we already have a slew of sessions, so uh, there's there are, there are great ones yet to come, we'll put it that way. Questions, concerns, cries of anguish? You have to hug the hacker before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's just bump. I think that was an awesome presentation. That thank was you. good. Yes, thank yeah. you, JJ. Thank you all for coming. 2016. <laughs> Yeah, if there's anybody want to follow up after, we can do that. Uh, follow me, publichacker.com.
and I will hack on Twitter. That's my plug. 2016. 2016. Cool. We're also visually paired. Thank you very much, man. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Now, I'll talk with you between now and then about help coordinate, helping me attack my website. Absolutely, my friend. Absolutely.